Double J, Jeff Jarrett here to tell you about SaveWithConrad.com. You've heard Conrad talk about the total nonstop savings they've provided current homeowners. But did you know Conrad and his team can also help my world listeners become homeowners? They make buying a home easier than getting the bag after a good housekeeping match. But don't take the last outlaw's word for it. Franklin Dove, Orlando, Florida. After listening to all of Conrad's podcasts and hearing the different stories that he shared, I felt the time was right for me to explore buying a home again and uh, reached out. And one thing led to another and finally closed last week. It was excellent. Uh, Everything flowed smoothly from my first contact. I just put in the initial request online. Francis reached out. We started the application process, got the approval moving. Holly was great. Larry Thompson was amazing. Everything was smooth. Communication was perfect. Really, it was a, a much better experience than anything that I could have imagined. My name is Franklin Dove in Orlando, Florida, and I got into my dream home thanks to SaveWithConrad.com. That's right. In my world, it doesn't get any better than five stars. Don't let your landlord get over on you. Walk out on that bad deal and stop throwing your money away on rent today with SaveWithConrad.com. That's right. It's SaveWithConrad.com. And MLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lenders. Woo! You can talk with America's leading wrestling broadcaster and his guests. Call 872-0750. Now, here's Jim Ross. Thanks very much, and welcome, everyone, to the broadcast. It's good to be back here in Atlanta, and I want to thank uh, Tony Schiavone for setting in for me last week. Had a good week off and enjoyed the vacation in the Cayman Islands. It's beautiful weather and a great place to go, and I highly uh, recommend it to anyone that uh, might be thinking about a vacation in that part of the country. Sure had a good time. And uh, we've got a very interesting program tonight. Uh, We're going to be talking in a few moments to Larry the Cruncher Zabisco, who's here in the studio. Larry Zabisco of the Dangerous Alliance will be our guest tonight. We'll be taking your calls. Here at eight seven two zero seven fifty or nationally one eight hundred WSB Talk. Also, uh, a little bit later in the broadcast, we hope to hear uh, from Dennis Brent of WCW Magazine, and uh, Dennis will be telling us about uh, uh, what's going on with the Omni. As a matter of fact, I understand that Dennis is on the phone right now. Let's see if uh, we can get him on here. Uh, here we go. Dennis, you on? Hello, Dennis. Hey, hey, Jim. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Uh, things are wild right down here right now. I just got through running for my life almost because we just had a Cactus Jack Abdullah match, and uh, they just about tore up the Omni. But the reason I'm calling is that Sting is here at the building tonight to be in Nikita's corner, and he looks real good. He's going to have to go out for the match in just a few minutes. I thought maybe we'd get him on for a second. Is he there now? Yeah. Yeah, put him on. Okay, just a second. Hey. A nice surprise Hello. here. Hey, Hello. Sting, how you doing? Good. You're Good. on the air here on the program. Is this Rossi? This is he. Rossi, how's how you, it going? I'm doing great. The big question is, how are you feeling? I'm feeling. I'm feeling. I can't complain at all. You, you're uh, fi- some of some of the guys are goofing off back here, pushing the buttons. Anyways, I'm feeling pretty good. You know, I'm healing normal, just like I said I would. And I wish I could hop in a ring. Nikita's going to be doing a number on Van Vader. I wish I could be doing it myself. You I know bet what I'm you. Saying? I, I just bet you. I want to save a little piece. That's all. I, I think there's plenty to go around at 450 pounds. You uh, got it. I, well, you beat me to it. I was going to say the same thing. He's a he's a huge man. I know that you've got a contract signed, uh, a rematch with him for the world title coming up a little bit later this month. But the big question is, how are you going to be feeling uh, uh, one week from tonight down in Jacksonville in the War Games? Well, to be honest with you, Rossi, if the doctor says thing, you're not ready. I don't think I'm going to care because adrenaline, he doesn't understand. The doctor doesn't understand about adrenaline, but I do. And maybe some of the people out there listening understand what it's about. But you get rid of pain, you just forget about pain, and you just go through it, and you do it. Yeah, well, let me tell you something, Sting. This is Zabisco, and I'm sitting here listening to what you're spilling out. And let me tell you about pain. You're not going to be able to block it out. And no matter what any doctor says to you, you better be ready next Sunday. Because when you and your little buddies get in the ring with the Dangerous Alliance, we're going to tell you that how much pain you're really in. You better be ready, bub, because the Dangerous Alliance is. My, oh, my. Mr. Zabisco, you are very cocky 
over the airwaves, over the telephone, aren't you? Oh, I can't wait to get in the ring with you. You know, I'm kind of perturbed with Polly, and I'm kind of perturbed with Rick Rude, but I don't like to be bad mouthed on the phone. I mean, if we were face to face, I'd feel a lot better about it because we could do something about it right now. If we were face to face, you'd be holding your ribs, crying like a baby. Get yourself <laughs> ready for next week, punk. That's all, all I got all to all say. All I can do is chuckle. All I can do is chuckle. Ha ha ha. You two gentlemen will meet uh, close up yeah. and personal in one week, and we'll yeah. sting well, listen. Sorry to be this way on the air. Well, know, I'm, I'm, I'm hang I didn't expect this. I didn't know Mr. Zabisco was sitting right next to you. He's uh, he's across the way here. Oh. You know how our studios. Uh, uh, surprise, situate. surprise for the stinger, huh? He's, uh, well, we always do. You're ready for anything. You're the, you're the, you're the man. i tell you something. I, I, the calls here at the radio program, uh, I know Tony got a lot of them last week wanting to know how you were doing. I'm, I'm, and I'm sure that everybody listening in our 37 state uh, listening audience is going to be very pleased to hear that you're going to be back in action uh, in one week in the war games. And we hope to uh, wish you the best of luck tonight. So you better be careful out I, there. I think deep down inside uh, the disco, you're probably hoping that I don't make it Saturday. I'm just hoping you hang up so that people don't fall asleep here. <laughs> Sting, thanks very much for being with us. Okay, Rossi. We appreciate it, my yeah. friend. All right. Well, that was uh, rather a, a surprise there. Dennis Brent uh, of the WCW magazine uh, on the uh, on the telephone, and the, we'll be talking about the magazine a little bit later uh, on the, in the program. Well, Larry, uh, so you think that uh, Sting will be uh, a little worse for wear come uh, well, War Games? I've been in this business a long time, and I could tell by his voice he's already depending upon the outcome. You know, being related by doctors. You know what doctors know? Nothing. All they know is when their tea time is. So here's a man, he's insecure. He knows deep in his heart he's not going to be in shape next Saturday. Broken ribs don't heal that fast, brother. The DA is ready. None of us are hurt. We're all A1 shape. And, brother, we're going to mop up the uh, cage with uh, all these punks. Let's, let's, before we start talking about the war games and, and things that are going on, because I want to talk to you about... Uh, uh, your status in the Dangerous Alliance. I want to talk to you about Medusa's uh, allegations regarding Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. But let's let's go back uh, uh, a few years. Uh, you were you were raised, if I'm not mistaken, in Pittsburgh. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, what what was uh, Larry Zabisco like as a youngster? Did you participate in athletics as a young man? I was always a rebel, Ross. I was always a loner. Uh, that's why wrestling became my sport. Because it was a sport where, uh, you know, during the amateurs, you could get out there man against man, one-on-one. -on -one. I tried football, and all I found was a bunch of dumb morons protected with pads, being led around, the, you know, by the nose, you know, by a coach and the assistant coach. And they would just go out there and, you know, be blithering idiots trying to impress their daddies. I, you know, want to be that one-on-one, -on -one, man against man. That was always me. So that was you were, you were an amateur wrestler in high school, I guess. Uh, high school, Penn State, you know, college years. In fact, I would have been on the Olympics. I smacked the assistant dean when I was a sophomore, and uh, that cost me a year and a half probation. You know, I mean, I could never get in the norm. I didn't even want to go to college, but with the scholarship in Vietnam, it was the smartest thing to do at the time. So like uh, Bill Clinton here. But Good old Bill, yeah. But anyway, the savior uh, of the country. Be Bill that Clinton. as it may, what does that Bill? What does Bill Clinton have to do with wrestling tonight here on Wrestling with Jim Ross? Not a whole heck of a lot. Now, the next question: uh, Were you discovered by Bruno Sammartino? Was he the guy that, well, that actually gets credit for yeah, discovering you? Basically, I was. You know, when I was a kid, I, uh, you know, San Martino was the name in that area. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I had the guts at that time, even though I think I was like fourteen or fifteen. I walked right into the man's backyard. Drove around his house a few times, saw him there, walked right through his hedges, right through his backyard. I, m I, remember, the, I remember he stood up, and he looked like a gorilla, uh -huh. you know, 270 pounds. He was big. He was big. And I walked up, introduced myself, and uh, I guess he, uh, you know, noticed that I had that guts and that fire in the eye and that sincerity. And uh, he took me under his wing, and, uh, you know, he was one of the... One of the greatest of those days, and uh, he basically started me off in, in the pros. You were even uh, his protege, you were his tag team partner, and then you became his bitter rival. What caused that yeah. breakup? Well, it's a long, emotional story of uh, a man who was like my big brother, and almost like a father figure, Bruno was, and... Uh, I think uh, you know down the road he was such a he was such a enormously you know charismatic you uh -huh. know, man at the time and that uh, I got lost in his shadow number one being his protege and number two he had a son coming up and uh, I, I felt that you know 
being lost in Bruno's shadow, and then Bruno, you know, obviously blood thicker than water going after his son, he was this man everybody thought was like a god and was stabbing me in the back. And, of course, being the rebel that I am, I rebelled against him, too. One of your uh, one of your biggest matches, I know, was held in Shea Stadium that uh, at the time was uh, uh, an attendance record. And uh, how, many, how many people were... Well, this was back in uh, 1980, and... Uh, the situation between Bruno and myself got to a head, and the Madison Square Garden was not big enough to hold the match in. We wrestled in Shea Stadium in front of over 45,000 people, and that was uh, way before the birth of Cable. We're going to be talking to Larry Zabisco tonight, ladies and gentlemen, about, uh, as I mentioned earlier, about the allegations uh, that are really going, uh, I think, a little bit too far as far as Medusa and Ricky Steamboat are concerned. Uh, we're also going to be talking about uh, you know, his standing and his feeling about being in the Dangerous Alliance. Uh, and we're going to be taking your calls as well. I do want to remind everyone that uh, a little bit later in the program, we're going to be talking about the WCW magazine. It's uh, uh, the, I've got a, a copy here of the, of the magazine that will be on sale on May 19th. And Sting is on the cover. We're going to be talking about that because they've got a brand new 1-800 number that you can order the magazine from. I'll be telling you about that in the program. Uh, so if you want to get your pencil and paper handy, uh, we can do that. I also think that uh, uh, we uh, have some news in the program about the Bruise Cruise. It looks like we're going to be having another Bruise Cruise. We'll be talking about that. If you'd like to talk about the, uh, the NWA World Tag Tournament on uh, TBS on June 16th, we can do that as well. So we've got a lot of things to talk about. All of our phones are full right now. I hope you'll take our number down. It's 872-0750 here in Atlanta or 1-800-WSB-TALK. I also want to remind you that this portion of Wrestling with Jim Ross is brought to you by Russell War 92, the pay-per-view that happens in one week. Welcome back, everyone, to Wrestling with Jim Ross here on News Talk Radio AM 750 WSB. And our meteorologist, Kurt Mellis, says that tonight it's going to be clear and cold. How can it be cold with a low of 55? I can't figure that one out. But anyway, tomorrow it's going to be mostly sunny with a high of 85 degrees. Right now it's 73 degrees here in Atlanta on West Peach Street. We're with Larry Zabisco, the Dangerous Alliance, in the studio. We're going to be taking your calls momentarily. Uh, don't forget, everyone, that uh, we'll be back at center stage just a, about two minutes from where we are right now on West Peach Street, just a block from the Art Center Marta Station. A uh, 7 o'clock start for the uh, taping of WCW Saturday night. We're going to be taping uh, three weeks' worth of uh, those programs. And guest hosts tomorrow night include uh, the uh, former tight end, the Oakland Raiders, Dave Casper. Also, Ricky Rackman of MTV, the young man that hosts the Headbangers Ball on MTV, will be there. And the former eight-time Mr. Uh, Olympia, uh, Lee Haney, uh, perhaps the greatest bodybuilder of all time, will be one of our guests, uh, co-hosts. And those three gentlemen will be there tomorrow night. And tomorrow night, you're going to see uh, such matches as Nikita Koloff, Ricky Steamboat, and Dustin Rhodes meet Larry Zabisco, Bobby Eaton, and Arn Anderson. Also, Brad Armstrong takes on the great Muda. And uh, Barry Wyndham will defend the world TV title against Arn Anderson. So it's going to be a big night. Tickets are free. Starts at 7 o'clock. It's uh, just about uh, a couple of three blocks from the Art Center Marta Station at Center Stage. And we hope you can be there with us uh, at 7 o'clock. Now let's go to our telephones. Mr. Zbisco, you ready to take some calls? Yes. Okay. No, I'm, I'm trying to contain some of your enthusiasm because we're going to talk to uh, Jenny and LaGrange. You're on Wrestling with Jim Ross and Larry Zbisco. I've got a question and a comment. All right, Jenny, go right ahead. But Rick Steamboat, I don't believe that's true. I believe the Dangerous Alliance made it up. Well, a lot of people do, Jenny, and we're going to talk to Mr. Zabisco about that a little bit later in the program. What's your comment? Uh, when y'all don't come to LaGrange? Come to LaGrange, Georgia? Uh, Jenny, I don't see LaGrange on the, on the calendar right now, but I will certainly uh, keep you abreast of that situation in case it... Uh, and we do get uh, down that way, and we thank you for your call tonight. Let's talk to Mike in Florida. Hi, Mike. You're on Wrestling with Jim Ross. Hi. How you doing? Good, Mike. Uh, I'd like to know when you're coming back to Lakeland, Florida. Well, Mike, I'm looking on the calendar here, and uh, it looks like on uh, the closest we're going to get to Lakeland is going to be on uh, we're going to be on the 13th of August in Sarasota, the 14th in Fort Myers, uh, and then the 15th in Jacksonville in, in the month of August. I don't. I'm looking here. I don't think that we're down, down that way in June either. So, uh, uh, I've been going to the cards at uh, Bayfront Center. Uh huh. And it seems to me that the one you had in Lakeland was a lot bigger than any of the ones in St. Pete. 
don't yeah. understand why you're not there more often. I don't know either, Mike, unless it's uh, the building might not be avail available when they need to route it. There's a lot of uh, criteria that goes into that decision-making, but uh, uh, we'll certainly keep you abreast of it. We appreciate you calling tonight from Florida. Let's go to my home state of Oklahoma and talk to Jeremy. You're on Wrestling with Jim Roth. Jeremy, how you doing? All right. Um, I was wanting to know when he's coming to Oklahoma City or Oklahoma. Where are you calling from, as a matter of fact? Hennessy. Hennessy? Yeah. Uh, well, let's see here. We're going to be in Oklahoma City on July 23rd, on Thursday night, at the State Fair Arena. Okay, thanks. Th Thursday night. Thanks, uh, Jeremy, for calling from uh, the Sooner State. Uh, this, this radio station, Larry, it's amazing. It gets out every, all over the place. Aren't you impressed? Yeah, I know. I can hardly stay awake listening to all these important people well, asking all these stupid questions. I, I, Look at this call. Is, you've got me here for another 35 minutes. Okay, this call is specifically for you. It's from Mountain View, Missouri. One of our regular callers. This is Miracle. And Miracle, you're on with Jim Ross and Larry Zabisco. How are you? Fine. Um, I want I want to ask you a quick question before I um, give Larry a, a comment and a question. Go ahead. I read in the newsletter that Sid uh, was coming back to WCW. Do you have... Absolutely no truth to that, Miracle. Okay. It's, uh, that's another wrong uh, something you read in the newsletters. You can't believe all that. Yeah, that's what I figured, but I just thought I'd ask. Okay. Okay, Larry, I've followed your career since I was 11 years old. Wow. <laughs> How old are you now, Miracle? 28? 28. 17 glorious years, yep. ladies and gentlemen. He's right here in this room. And um, I just wanted to ask you, I said, I wish you would get out of the Dangerous Alliance, and when are you? Because you and Arn are much, much too good to be in with Paul. Uh, good question. When am I? I have no plans on uh, getting out of the Dangerous Alliance. The Dangerous Alliance is a, uh, you know, member, you know, five-member uh, organization uh, of... Uh, of real men, honey, and uh, we're going to take over WCW and wrestling, and uh, there's nothing that anybody can do about it. It's uh, financial, uh, financially very rewar uh, rewarding, so uh, I'd have to be pretty dumb to quit. Thanks, Miracle, for your call tonight. We always appreciate you calling, and let's talk to Jeff and Dunwoody. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jim. How you doing? Yeah, I have two comments. All right. Yes, um, there has been a black cloud over the Dangerous Alliance. Because they lost the TV title, the world tag titles. It hasn't, just, it hasn't been a good uh, week in the last seven I think days. Tonight they'll lose the U.S. title. But there's but there's one meaning for that. Why is it? I think that Larry Zabisco will win the Super Nintendo Top Ten Challenge and go to Beat Blast and become the new world champion. Wow. that's There you go, Larry. Well, the kids, uh, the kids obviously got class. And uh, a good eye, because uh, Larry Zabisco is one of the greatest wrestlers in the world. And uh, I have a, as much uh, of a chance to wind up with that world belt as anybody. Yeah, Jeff, your Uncle Larry says thanks for calling tonight. Let's talk to Stop Brian. It, Jim. Let's talk to Brian and Marietta. Brian, you're on Wrestling with Jim Ross and Larry Zabisco. Yeah, Larry Zabisco. Where did you get the name The Cruncher? The Cruncher. <laughs> I inadvertently made it up myself. I uh, I masterminded and arranged a little rendezvous that Arn Anderson and myself had with uh, Barry Windham one afternoon as he was pulling up in his car, and uh, unfortunately, Barry Windham's hand got got broke. And uh, I made a I made a crack to the boys afterwards about. Uh, I said, Mama, you might as well just call me the cruncher because uh, that was a really uh, unique feeling the way Wyndham's bones crunched inside that, that car door, and it just kind of stuck with me. Thanks, Brian, for your call. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll be taking more of your calls from uh, for, for Larry Zabisco here. Of course, our number here locally is 872-0750. You can call us nationally at 1-800-WSB-TALK. I'd like for you to know you're listening to Wrestling with Jim Ross, brought to you in part by Russell War 92. It happens in one week. Now, more with America's leading wrestling broadcaster. It's Wrestling with Jim Ross. You can talk with Jim Ross and his guests by calling 872-0750. Now, here's Jim Ross. Thanks very much, and welcome back, everyone, to the program. Uh, we have Larry Zabisco, the Dangerous Alliance, here in the studio with us. Earlier in the program, we heard from the WCW World's Heavyweight Champion, Sting, who is... Uh, recuperating from his injuries sustained at the hands of Big Ben Bader. Sting will be involved, as will Mr. Zabisco, next Sunday in the uh, war games at Russell War, the big pay-per-view. We hope you'll call your local cable company and be a part of that because uh, we're going to talk at length to Mr. Zabisco about the war games. But I've got a little uh, prize here for the uh, uh, 
uh, mothers. It's uh, Mother's Day, and uh, I want to wish all the moms out there listening to our program a happy Mother's Day. And what we have here, we have some, uh, uh, we have uh, four event shirts uh, from uh, next Sunday's event. These are real nice, full color, uh, heavy uh, uh, duty uh, t shirts made in the USA. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first four moms that call tonight on our contest line, 741-0750. My producer, Daryl Harris, will answer the phone at 741-0750, the first four moms that call. Give Daryl your name and your address, and uh, and then uh, Daryl will get the four winners, and we'll uh, wish you all a happy Mother's Day a little bit later. These are great-looking shirts uh, for this event, uh, and I want to thank... Turner Home Entertainment for uh, their assistance in uh, getting these prizes because these are really good shirts. So the first four moms that call at 741-0750 will get a shirt. That's another rip-off, Mother's Day. Just an- another way for women to get gifts, right? Larry, are you chauvinistic tonight? No, no. Mother's Day is a b- beloved holiday. You shouldn't be that Beloved. Way. You shouldn't be that way, I can tell you that. Fans, I do want to remind you that... Uh, uh, we've got a big weekend of TV coming up this weekend. Hope you'll tune in. Uh, of course, for our, we kick it off Saturday morning on TBS in the Power Hour at 9.05 uh, with Missy Hyatt. So Missy does the mail, and uh, we'll review a lot of stuff. And Larry has uh, his own feelings re- regarding women in the workplace. Uh, so we'll get into that. As a matter of fact, we're going to talk about uh, that in just a few moments. On WCW Saturday night, uh, Fly and Brian and Teddy Long will be there as guest co-host, and uh, we'll be talking to the Z-Man. Pillman and Z-Man will meet in one week at Wrestle War for the light heavyweight title. It should be an interesting interview between opponents. Uh, Nikita Koloff and Ricky Steamboat meet uh, Larry Zabisco and Arn Anderson this coming Saturday on television. And Johnny B. Bad takes on Scotty Flamingo in the light heavyweight contest. And, of course, Tony Schiavone, Magnum T.A. will have uh, the WCW main event for you next Sunday night at 6.05 on TBS. The final word before we kick off uh, uh, Wrestle War. And then, of course, uh, on Worldwide Wrestling, seen locally here on Channel 69, uh, on Superstars of Wrestling Saturday nights, about 11 o'clock. It'll be Big Van Vader and Nikita Koloff in a top 10 challenge match, which could be most uh, interesting. A stiff battle of be pool. very brutal. Indeed it will. Indeed it will. Let's go back to the telephones and uh, talk to Emmanuel in Atlanta. You're on Wrestling with Jim Ross here on AM 750 WSB. Uh, I wonder uh, whether Mr. Hughes still wrestling. Yeah, Emmanuel did. Uh, he were, he wrestled last night, as a matter of fact, against Akita uh-huh. Koloff on uh, TBS. Did you miss that? Yeah, I missed. Yeah, he's uh, he's uh, back wrestling. He's just not getting as much TV time as he got at one time, but he's uh, he's competing out there. Okay, that's another question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, what happened to uh, Evan and Nightheart? Evan Nightheart. Oh, Jim the Anvil Nightheart. I think he uh, he left the WWF, but I don't think he's wrestling anywhere right now. Do you know Larry? Be- I, I do not have a clue. I think he lives in Florida, Emmanuel, but he's not wrestling currently with anyone uh, right now. You never know. He may be a prospect for WCW somewhere down the road. We appreciate your call tonight. Let's talk to uh, Robert down in Villa Rica. Robert, you're on Wrestling with Jim Ross and Larry Zabisco tonight. Yeah, I got two questions and a comment. Okay. And one of my questions was, in the NWA Tag Team Tournament, there's talk about inviting a couple of WWF teams. Mm Mm-hmm. If they were to get in that tournament, which two teams do you think would have made it? Well, I'm sure they would have probably wanted to send their champions, uh, IRS and uh, Ted DiBiase. Uh, and I'm assuming they'd probably want to send the Road Warriors. But uh, you know what happens when we assume? Uh, it's just not going to... Don't look at me when you say that. It's not going to work. I don't think the WWF is going to be too cooperative with WCW. Do you, Larry? You wrestled for the WWF. No, I've never wrestled for the WWF. Oh, you haven't? I wrestled... For the WWWF. Oh, okay, excuse me. Which was Point uh, well taken. Vince McMahon Sr. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've had no desire to lend my services to the WWF. All right, and now let's talk to uh, Harold, who is uh, on uh, the phone tonight uh, from Illinois. Harold, you're on Wrestling with Jim Ross, and thanks for calling. Yeah, hello, May. I enjoy your show a real lot. Um, a real my lot. My question originally was going to be about Sid Justice's suspension from the WWF, but I heard you comment on that. Yeah, Sid's, uh, the, you know, the the obvious rumor would be that Sid would come back to WCW, but uh, uh, I, I when I when I got back from my vacation, I'd heard about Sid leaving, and I talked to Kay Allen Fry late Friday night, and that one of the things I asked him specifically, are we interested in Sid Justice, Vicious, whatever, Sid by another name is still a Sid. True, but, not true. But uh, we, uh, 
uh, he said they were they had no interest in it at all. So uh, that's where that stands. I don't think I don't think Harold. That's the direction that they want to go right now with the, the wrestling. I think they want to get a little bit higher skilled, more yeah. wrestling in the ring. You know, in, in other words, jerk. Big guys with lots of muscles don't make the grade. You have to be a wrestler. If you're not a wrestler, go dig a ditch. So, Harold, what else is on your mind tonight? Um, yeah, I was wondering if you had any more information on Jake the Snake Roberts, and I had also heard that Hercules might possibly be coming to WCW. Is there any truth to that rumor? Well, I've heard both those names pop up. Uh, I, I'm not sure what Hercules' status is, but I do know that Jake the Snake Roberts... Uh, has talked to WCW officials, but I don't know what the legal uh, ramifications are. You know, he's he's been under contract to the WWF, and obviously the WCW could not talk with him officially until he had a release. And I was gone all last week, so I don't know if he got his release or not. I know there's an interest there. But, uh, he's a quality athlete, and, and he can wrestle, and we'll uh, wait and see how that develops. Harold, thanks for calling tonight from Illinois. We appreciate it uh, down here in Atlanta. Let's go back up and talk to... Uh, Lucas, who is calling from Atlanta. Lucas, you're on Wrestling with Jim Ross and Larry Zabisco. Hey, Jim. How you doing? I'm all right. Uh, I got a quick question for you, though. A question for Larry. All right. Uh, I'd like to know when is the radio show going to go, go to two, two hours? Well, they're uh, negotiating that. Uh, Lucas, they're still talking about that. We're going to do it, but it's just a matter of working out the, the programming that follows us here on the station. So uh, when all the... Uh, the uh, the guys in the white shirts get their heads together. They'll make the right decision, and we hope that we're going to start uh, uh, sometime in, in uh, June. You know, I'm, I'm ready. I'm, we could do it tomorrow for all I care. I'm, I'm ready to do it. What else is on your mind? Yeah, I'd like to ask Larry something. Go ahead. Um, I was wondering, how come you haven't got any tile shots? Let me tell you something, Luke, baby. You throw some cold water in your face, wake up, and quit mumbling, and you're going to make a lot better impression of yourself. The reason I have no titles right now is, number one, the men with the titles are scared to death of me, and the Dangerous Alliance had some other important business to take care of. We had the U.S. title. We had the tag team titles. Uh, we've got some business to take care of, and there's always the world title, which may uh, it interests uh, me the most. Thanks, Lucas, for your call tonight. Let's talk to uh, Philip, who's calling us uh, from Stone Mountain. Hi, Philip. You're on Wrestling with Jim Ross. Hey, Jim. How are you doing? I had a... Uh question about the war games mm -hmm. okay now i know the dangerous alliance is going again thing team now if one man surrenders on um either team does that mean that's it for either team that's it the the way that the war games works is that when any member of either team submits or surrenders that's after all 10 have entered the ring and there could be a lot of damage done between the time that the match starts and the match beyond begins. Larry, you were in this last year. How can you understand what the hell he said? Who? Philip? I had no problem at all. Philip's uh, he's, Phillip's, uh, out there in Stone Mountain. You had a problem with your headset there, I guess. Uh, the war games, one of the most unique concepts. You've been wrestling 17 years. Last year was your first time in the war games. So, I mean, you know, you, you, had, you had hundreds of matches before your first war games. What was your impression of the format of the war games? Uh, how, as far as an athlete's perspective, and then as far as a fan's perspective. Well, in terms of an athlete, I mean, a wrestling match is uh, you know, brutality in itself. That's hard enough as it is. The war games was basically horrifying. I mean, the bodies you know that are in there, the, the steel cage itself, the confined area. There is a complete you know disregard of strategy. It is basically you know animal versus animal. And uh, the potential for getting hurt, you know, the percentage of the odds that you're going to walk out of there uninjured is practically nil. So, it, 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 believe me, it takes an unbelievable amount of intestinal fortitude just to walk through the door. Believe Big, me biggest what I cage. Say that. It's very, uh, I know when uh, I'm going to be doing the broadcast with Jesse the Body Ventura. And last year I did the broadcast with Dusty Rhodes and the big cage I was hanging above. We had that one in Phoenix. And, uh... The uh, I've never seen a war games, and the first one was here in Atlanta, July fourth of eighty seven. That didn't have blood, that didn't have injuries. I've never seen one where all for where at least uh, you came out. You, you don't come out unscathed. In other words, and you prepare for that. I guess if you could. I, I, well, you, you can't prepare. You you know you're going to get hurt. You you just try not to get hurt bad, and that's horrifying. Yeah, last year flying Brian got injured. Uh, I've seen guys, uh, it's just, I, from the days when the horsemen were feuding with people back in the uh, mid-80s, uh, 
these things are just blood bass and and again there's no time limit there's no pinfalls you only the match ends when one member of either team submits or surrenders and uh, I, it, this match could not air on regular TV and another thing that's interesting about this uh, is that they're only going to have one war games this year it's not going to be like well they'll have the war games on pay-per-view and then at three or four other sites this is it the only time war games will be held this year will be one week from tonight on pay-per-view. But if you had more than one of these a year, it would be uh, cruelty to animals. Oh, well, it's, it's, a, it's a brutal situation. Fans, I want to, a uh, new feature here on a program uh, brought to you by WCW Magazine. I want to remind you that uh, you can get WCW Magazine uh, by calling 1-800-GET-WCW-1. And to simplify that, that's 1-800-438-9291. one 800 Four three eight ninety two ninety one, and the superstar stat pack is really going to be interesting this month on Greg the Hammer Valentine. Uh, interesting thing I saw his favorite movie is Scarface, which I could believe. His favorite TV show is The Current Affair and Hard Copy. Interesting information you'll find and only find in the WCW magazine. And if you want your copy, you can call one eight hundred four three eight nine two nine one. This is Wrestling with Jim Ross. My guest is Larry Zabisco, and we'll be back right after this. And welcome back, everyone, to Wrestling with Jim Ross here on the uh, program tonight. We're talking to Larry Zabisco. We've been taking your calls. We've heard from the world's heavyweight champion, Sting, earlier in the hour. I do want to remind you that our meteorologist, Kurt Mellis, says tonight it's going to be clear with a low of 55 degrees tomorrow, mostly sunny here in Atlanta, and with a high of 85 degrees right now at 72 degrees here on West Peachtree. Uh, we want to thank our uh, and congratulate our Mother's Day callers. I uh, want to thank uh, Gretchen Rossi from uh, Flintstone, Georgia. Uh, Flintstone, is that right, Daryl? That's, that's near Bedrock, isn't it? Never mind. And then Patricia Smith called from uh, Flint, Michigan. Irene uh, Brooks from Carrollton, Georgia. And Bonnie Jones from Austell, Georgia. I want to wish all you ladies a very happy Mother's Day. And we'll be sending your T-shirts and some other nice things out to you this week. So thank you for listening to the program. Let's talk about, uh, we're talking about moms and females this whole situation. Now, let's be real honest with each other. Let's, I'm you know, always 100%. Okay. I'm serious. I'm serious. So it gets me you, you have, you have, you're on the road anywhere from five to seven days a week wrestling for the Dangerous Alliance. In most of those situations, Medusa is with the group. Uh, you all travel in basically an entourage type situation. I've seen that on time to time. More or less. She, she, says, she says that Ricky Steamboat has been following her, has been stalking her, and have you well, seen Ricky Steamboat around Medusa in the last I find two that months? I find that hard to swallow, and I'm going to tell you why. A couple of reasons. I mean, you know, number one, the Medusa is, you know, pretty much of a loner. So, uh, you know, what she does when she disappears, you know, I have no idea. But I've never, ever seen Steamboat near the Medusa. Now, you've got to keep in mind, and a little advice to all your little crunchers out there, you know, if you walk into a bar on ladies' night and wave your gold card, you will discover the integrity of womanhood. But on the other hand, I don't even, you know, there was, there's no way Steamboat would even, even show up around the Dangerous Alliance or any one member of it. So for me to ever see Steamboat, I really can't swallow that. All right. Uh, I, think we've, I, think, I, think, I, I think at least the Medusa would, would, you know, earn for a real man. Yeah, real, please. And uh, let's talk to Darcy in Atlanta. You're on Wrestling with Jim Ross, Darcy. Yeah, yeah. Could you tell me, um, i got three questions. Um, could you tell me, you know, the next, next class of the champs, right? Yeah. Um, when are they going to be a cage match? Uh, Darcy, don't know when the, when the next uh, cage match is uh, signed. Other than one week from tonight, it's the biggest cage of all. That's uh, War Games, and that's on pay-per-view. And you can call your local cable company and watch that one. And we appreciate you calling tonight. Let's talk to uh, Michelle in Smyrna. How are you doing, Michelle? I'm oh, fine. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks for calling. Um, I have a question and a quick comment. All right. Um, my question is, who are the Steiners going up against at Russell War? The Steiners are taking on the... Uh, uh, one of the top teams in Japan, Tatsumi Fujinami, and his partner's name is Izuka. And the reason that they're wrestling that team is that uh, the winner of that match will then be uh, ranked the number one contender for the IWGP tag title. Steiners, uh, even though they're the WCW World Tag Champions now, they still uh, want to win more championships. So that's who they're going to wrestle at Wrestle War. All right, Dad. Okay, well, thanks, Michelle. Dad just got her cut off. Dad said, so get off the phone and study your homework, and let's talk to Mark in Atlanta. Hi, Mark. Hello. How are you doing? 
Fine. I'd like to congratulate Barry Windham and the Steiners on their victories in title matches this past week. Yeah, they they rose to the occasion, Mark. And I have a three-part quick suggestion about the Dangerous Alliance. It was done in Florida, and it kind of remedied the situation. Hmm. One, if a manager or valet enters the ring illegally and is pinned, it counts even in a title match. Mm -hmm. And if a valet or manager jumps up on the edge of the ring during a match, they are fined $1,000 for each and every time. And if a member interferes in a match with another member, the one they interfere on the behalf of is suspended for 60 days, mm -hmm. fined $10,000, and you the know, one doing, doing the interfering gets hey, the same. where did you come from that you couch potato, you potato chip stuff and fat slobs going to come out here and interject rules for wrestlers to live by? Let me tell you something, jerk. You sit in the couch, watch the TV, and keep your mouth shut. Don't come out with any of these idiotic ideals, fines for this, fines for that. They've got enough fines. They've got enough fines. Just sit there and keep your mouth shut. Larry's not one that's for bu bureaucracy, uh, Mark. Uh, Mark, that's Larry's opinion. We appreciate your call very much. Let's talk to Daniel down in Savannah. Hi, Daniel. How you doing, Jim? How I'm you doing, Larry? Good. Terrific. All right. Uh, I got a quick question for you, Jim. All right. Uh, do you remember a wrestler by the name of Gino Hernandez? Sure, I know him very well. Um, how did he die? Uh, cocaine overdose. Really? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Does that shock you? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what happened. Gino... Uh, Lived in the fast lane and drove a little too fast and uh, caught up with him. Let's talk uh, to Eric down in Louisiana. Eric, how you doing? Well, pretty good, Mr. Ross. How are you? Fine. Thanks for calling. Where are you calling from? Uh, Denham Springs, right outside Baton Rouge. When are y'all coming back down here? Uh, you know, I, I, it's not on the schedule. I, we don't run that Mid-South area as much as we should. Uh, but uh, anyway, what's your question, buddy? Well, well I haven't been getting y'all tonight, so I don't know if anybody's asked you about this. But I noticed Rick Rude was talking about the... WWF on uh, WCW Saturday night, mm -hmm. and I couldn't help but to notice that there was a WWF microphone at the NWA uh, Tag Team Tournament press conference, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if you guys are in, in any kind of negotiations with them or anything. No, none at all, uh, Eric. Uh, uh, I think that WCW would be more than willing to... Uh, to uh, work with the WWF, but uh, unfortunately, that's just not in the uh, in the cards right now. Uh, I I don't think it's in the best interest of all the fans. I think the fans should be given the best matches. I said on my hotline last night, and this will probably get me in trouble, that I felt like Ric Flair should be able to come back and wrestle in the NWA Heavyweight Tournament if it's held in August in Japan, because it gives him the opportunity to win the NWA title for the eighth time. But unfortunately, uh, that's not going to happen. So, uh, but uh, anyway. A good question, and we appreciate your call tonight from uh, Louisiana. Well, Larry, one final thing here. Are you happy being in the Dangerous Alliance? Do you see a long, illustrious career for you in that organization? Well, the Dangerous Alliance so far has achieved its, uh, its plan up to this quarterly period. So uh, I have no uh, indications uh, other than to uh, go with the flow and rake in the dough. All right, Larry, thanks for being with us tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, good luck uh, next week in War Games. And don't forget, everyone, that uh, tomorrow night we'll, we'll be back at center stage. Our guest co-hosts in the studio include Dave Casper, Ricky Rackman of MTV, and the legendary bodybuilder Lee Haney. So, I used to watch him on Green Acres. That was his uncle, Mr. Haney. Oh. Uh, and then, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to have a, a big weekend next weekend. Here on the program, we're going to tape the program. I'm going to have a very special guest on. It'll be pre-recorded next week because we will be down in Jacksonville, but we want you to listen anyway. Be sure and join us for Wrestle War. This is Jim Ross. Good night, everybody. Can you believe we had seven months without an NFL game? That's crazy, right? Well, the good thing is that's over. The NFL is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving you a can't-miss offer for week one. This week, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just 5 bucks on any NFL game. DraftKings is hooking everyone up with game day greatness. All customers can take advantage of two new offers every single game day this September. Check the app to see what you get. Download now and use the code Jim Ross to sign up. New customers take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting five bucks. That's code Jim Ross only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny in Connecticut, help is available for gambling problem calling 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccp.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of 
Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario, see dkng.slash football for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Well, I'll tell you something we all agree on, or at least you and I do. The best shave of your life is with Henson shaving. I love this product. I'm going to use it forever and ever. It's the last razor I'll ever need. I think you're going to like it too. Henson shaving is a great company. First of all, they're a family owned business. You know, I love that, but how about this? This wasn't the original plan. Henson shaving is an aerospace parts manufacturer. Yeah, you heard me. They've made parts for the international space station and Mars Rover. And now they're using their aerospace grade CNC machines to make metal razors that are just 0.0013 inches. That's less than the thickness of a human hair. It means a secure and stable blade that gives you a vibration free shave. The razor also has built in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which makes clogging virtually impossible. You see Henson shaving wanted to make the best razor, not the best razor business. You see a lot of other razor businesses. They're going to put you in a plastic razor and sign you up for a subscription and have proprietary blades and then switch it out every year or two. So there's some planned obsolescence and you got to buy the new one. None of that exists here with Henson. This is the same type dual edge razor that your grandfather used, except this has the benefits of new school tech. Those CNC machines are getting this dude down to 0.0013 inches. So it's the best of the old school feel, but with all the new school tech, but my favorite part about Henson shaving is not only is it better than what you've been doing as far as your shave experience, it's also cheaper. You see, it's only three to $5 to replace the blades. Not three to five dollars a week, not three to five dollars a month, not three to five dollars a quarter, three to five dollars a year. How do you beat that? Let's say no to subscriptions and say yes to a razor that will last you a lifetime. Visit hensonshaving.com slash JR to pick the razor for you and use the code JR and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just be sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N-S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash J-R and use the promo code J-R. Jim, you've had a chance to use this razor. This is as good as it gets. I think you're going to love it. Check it out. You'll be glad you did. Hensonshaving.com is where you want to go slash J-R. Now it's wrestling with Jim Ross on News Talk Radio AM 750 WSB. You can talk with America's leading wrestling broadcaster and his guests. Call 8720750. Now here's Jim Ross. Thank you very much and welcome everyone to the program here tonight. Uh, I'm glad you're with us. And we certainly hope you'll be a part of the broadcast tonight by calling our program, of course, 872-0750 here locally in Atlanta. And nationally, you can call us toll-free at 1-800-WSB-TALK. In the studio tonight, we'll be talking to the Junkyard Dog, and we'll also be talking to uh, Theodore R. Long, uh, Teddy Long, the godfather of WCW. In just a few moments, I do want to remind everyone that uh, also in the program, we're going to be talking about a uh, big national TV taping at center stage. That's going to be tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. And uh, Randy Owen of the country group uh, Alabama will be one of my guest co-hosts on that broadcast. Uh, and we are certainly excited about uh, his uh, involvement in WCW. And that national TV taping will be uh, at center stage in West Peachtree tomorrow at 7 o'clock. And tickets for that are free. Uh, there'll also be a WCW event over in Birmingham. We'll be traveling over there this Tuesday night, 7 o'clock starting time. And uh, all the top stars are scheduled to be in Birmingham. And hope you fans that are listening to our broadcast tonight over in uh, in Alabama and the surrounding area will join us in Birmingham for that big event this Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. And, of course, we'll be back here in uh, Atlanta, uh, the headquarters of WCW, on uh, Sunday, May the 10th, that's a 7.30 start, and we'll be talking more about those events a little bit later in the program. Also, uh, about uh, TV next weekend, we'll be talking uh, about uh, Sting a little bit in this uh, broadcast from our two friends here in the studio. Uh, before we talk to the Junkyard Dog, I do want to talk to uh, Teddy Long. And, and, Teddy, I know that uh, 
the last time you were on the program, we talked about your involvement in the community, and I know you've been real active in the community. In just the last few days, you guys have uh, done some neat things. What's uh, been on your agenda the last few days? Well, uh, let me say thanks to WSB once again, uh, Jim Ross, and also to you for having me on your show here. And uh, what we've been involved in on yesterday, uh, myself along with the Junkyard Dog, we were at the Black Expo at the World Congress Center. We were there on behalf of the Starlight Foundation, so we were signing autographs and giving away free tickets the center stage to all the kids there and uh, we also uh, like to thank v103 for having us uh, on their program too and let's also say hello to uh, joe petticino bunny blackstone at wvu channel 69 they do a wonderful job of letting me come on there on saturday nights and talk about uh, the events uh, where i'm going and uh, jim if i could just uh, sounds like he just got an academy award dog <laughs> uh, <laughs> go ahead Teddy. <laughs> well jim if i could also mention that on may the 4th uh, we will be doing something that I call one of the greatest creations in the history of the hood, and it's at the Jonesboro South uh, Community Center. Uh, Jamie Dukes, the center for the Atlanta Falcons, he's going to be there with us. Uh, Ron Simmons, the Steiners, uh, the Z-Man, uh, Johnny B. Bad, uh, Chuck Washington of the Atlanta Hawks, and uh, we're also going to have some Hawks players there. We'll be giving away tickets to the Omni and a lot of WCW merchandise, and it's called Going to See the Homies uh, in the Hood. So May the 4th, we want to be out there, we'll have a TV camera there and want all the homies and everybody to be there and uh let's see something about the kids over at jonesboro south i think that's a great uh, great situation we'll talk more about that in the hour and and uh, the junkyard dog as i said is here a dog maybe uh you can get jimmy dukes to uh, style you and uh godfather's uh hair he's uh, he's got his own hair salon now down in buckhead well you know when it starts to about frying and dying and laying to the side mine have been fried and i've got it laid to the side already you know i don't go for that i just leave mine flat and low JYD is, of course, one of the most recognizable figures in the world of professional wrestling and has been for many, many years. He has been a uh, a real uh, uh, colorful performer as far as uh, a man that always excited the crowd. He always had a great fan support, great great base of, of fans. But, dog, let's go back. Uh, tell the fans uh, where you grew up. and where, I know you, you grew up in North Carolina. But what, what, where did you grow up in North Carolina and what was that like? Well, I, was, uh, I grew up in uh, Waysboro, North Carolina. And it's a little small town, about six miles out from Charlotte. I did uh, went to Elson Senior High School there, and uh, ended up graduating from Bowman Senior High School. And from there, I had some like thirty-seven scholarships, uh, half in football and also half in uh, amateur wrestling. So I chose a smaller school at that time, and I went on to Feather State, and uh, I graduated from there with a BS in sociology. Now I'm just about to complete my master in early childhood psychology, which I've been working on that off and on. But, you know, it was a great town, a town man, and I uh, really enjoyed growing up there, and it taught me a lot of things about uh, trying to handle myself in life. Uh, you, uh, how many kids did you graduate from high school with? Uh, that class that year was 375. Pretty good size class. Yeah, yeah pretty good, bad. Pretty good size class. And uh, Fayetteville State's an NAI school, right? Yeah, yeah, 2A. Uh, you uh, was an offensive lineman? Offensive guard. And uh, what after you, who did you play with right after the Well, after college? my senior year, and, uh, I got picked up in the free agent draft. And I went to Houston. I stayed with Houston uh, about a half a season. And uh, they traded Lynn Dickey, uh, running back from Alabama and m Terrence Wells, and myself up to Green Bay. And they bought in John Hale. And I ended up getting a three and a half season out of there. But each time the season started off with them good, my knees, I blew up my knees out. Then I left there and came back in and started professional wrestling. I started off in uh, actually North Carolina. Then I got shipped in uh, to Louisiana, which that's when I met Cowboy Bill Watson. Then from there I went into German, into Puerto Rico for half a year in the Germany for six months from Germany I transferred back into Canada which I stayed in a year and a half and I got married and uh, had a misfortune accident I lost my kid up there and uh, my wife wanted to move out so we moved back into uh, Louisiana and uh, it was just my time I was at the right like my grandma said if you're at the right place at the right time a bird in hand is better than 16 in the bush <laughs> so the bird with my hand was better so I met uh, Cowboy Bill Watson the Lord looked out for me man and uh, hit him to miss south and then uh, a year or two later, I ran into UGM, and everything clicked off for me. There it was. Well, I, I, I was just a coincidence as far as that's concerned. You were you had it well in, under control when I came along. And uh, it was it was unique that uh, at that time in wrestling, uh, you were the really the first black superstar, a role model that the kids had uh, in wrestling. And that must have been a, a heck of a responsibility. You know, at first, I didn't realize exactly what I had, you know, because... I came from a, a religious type family, you know, which is might be hard for a lot of people to understand. But I never been, you know, with my side, so I never been an old, no bullet type guy. And I was, I was always 
a guy that could think real well. Yeah, my grandma always told me I was too old at, old at that time for my age. I could never understand what my grandma was saying. But I remember one day I was on a plane, and I couldn't short Jim. And an old guy was sitting across from me. I was flying out of Jackson, Mississippi. This is 1982. You know, the time was rough back then. The road started rocking still. And the guy looked at me. He said, you know, if, if you lived back in the early 40s or 50s, he said, you would be sitting in that seat. And I looked at him. I said, what do you mean? He said, just the way you carry yourself. He said, now, I don't have nothing against you. He said, but the power and stuff that you got inside of you, he said, you were able to control people. I said, I said you know, it still hadn't phased me. He said, not that you, you know, you try to promote yourself. He said, the way you respond to people, people respond to you. He said, no matter what race it is, he said, seem like you just get along with everybody. And it made me feel really good, you know. That's a good compliment. Yeah, and uh, I shook the guy here when I got off and... Lord bless me, man. About a year later, man, things saw actually rolling for me. And I still didn't realize what I had. And then Bill Watts kept talking to me. Fear the guy said, man, as long as you treat people good, then it's always going to come back to you. So I figured that's why I've been around for the last past 12, 13 years, because I try not to mistreat anybody. You know, I had the chance, too, and I was in the position to do this, you know, but that wasn't my style. You always, you've always been a fan favorite in your career. You've never been one to, to take the... Uh an alternate pass, shall we say. You've always seemed like you've always tried to compete on the side of the rule book. And yeah, I think yeah. that's something that uh, is certainly admirable. But see, that's, that, that comes from back in which, uh, like I said again, back in with my grandma, which I call her mama because she raised me. My mama, my father broke up, so my grandma would took the kids in and raise them. My mom worked two, a couple of jobs to keep us going. But that's also like now I work with the school system a lot. You can see it in the kids. Not that the parents is not taking care of them. Is that uh, everybody's, you know, it's, it, the clocks is, is go moving too fast for a lot of them now. Mm -hmm. You don't get that upbringing, man, so you know what to look for in life and how to take it when it comes. They, the old cliche that some kids are growing up too fast is really applicable, yeah. I think, in some of our society right yeah. now. Uh, because I, I know I've got a 15-year-old daughter back in Oklahoma that thinks she's about 25. Oh, yeah, I can understand that. You I got know, 11 going on 27. There you go. So uh, that's how that works. Well, we're going to be talking a lot about wrestling. We're going to be taking your calls. But, Dog, very quickly, uh, before we talk about wrestling, when your wrestling career is over, when when it's time to hang them up, what are you, what are you going to do then? Well, Jim, you know, like I'm saying, you know, I'm still working on that on that second part of the degree. Either I want to get into something like with the radio broadcasting, uh, either get out in the community and work with something like pre-trial release, which is dealing with the kids, but not on a small scale level, you know, like working with something like Governor Zell Miller got here, something like a camp for the kids. Right. You know, I feel as though I've been blessed. And I'm not looking to make no whole lot of money, but as long as I can pay, keep paying my bills, which I'm not planning on having any bills, but it's best to have something coming in with not everything going on with your kids growing up. I just try to pay back some in the community that I've been taking out, you know? I think that's, uh, I think that's something that more professional athletes uh, need to be aware of is the community that they, they live in. And a tremendous influence that uh, an athlete or personality has on the youngsters out there. And it's certainly it's the same way in football or baseball, and it's certainly that way in wrestling. Uh, uh, the kids uh, are just uh, so devout, and they're so impressionable. And it's great that guys like uh, Teddy Long and Junkyard Dog are committing some of their time to help out. Now, we're going to be taking your calls here. We're going to be talking to the Godfather and the Junkyard Dog. If you've got some questions you'd like to ask, we certainly encourage you to call us. Uh, we're at 872-0750 here in Atlanta and 1-800-WSB-TALK. This is Wrestling with Jim Ross, and we'll be right back. All right, let's take a time out right here, JR. We want to talk about something that you and I really love talking about. You always say on the show, it comes down to the two C's, Connie, cash and creative. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a creative way for you to save some cash. Thanks to our friends at Rocket Money. And I have to admit, when I first heard about Rocket Money, I thought, well, that can't save me any money. You see, the idea is we all sign up for subscriptions and then we kind of forget about them. And I thought, well, not me. I'm a good steward with my money. What could they possibly find that I missed? Turns out, uh, a lot. I signed up for a DAZN fight, and I didn't realize it, but when I signed up for the monthly subscription, I never canceled it. So that fight happened more than a year prior to when I actually signed up for DAZN, and they were just hitting my account every single month. I was throwing my money away, Jim. Well, not anymore, thanks to Rocket Money. Not only that, they found that the wife and I both signed up for Hulu, but dude, we watch TV together. We don't need two separate Hulu accounts. Now I'm saving money every single month, and it's all because of Rocket Money. And you may not realize this, but subscriptions are draining your wallet too. The average person has around 12 paid subscriptions, and man, they don't even remember they're subscribed or signed up for about half of those. 
and you don't really know how much you're spending until you sign up for Rocket Money. At least that was my experience. By the way, it does a lot more than that. It's a great app that tracks all of your expenses so you know exactly where your money is gone. And it turns out like over 80% of people have something they signed up for that they forgot about. Maybe it's a streaming service or a fitness program. Whatever it is, they take your unwanted subscriptions and they cancel them. They monitor your spending. They help you lower your bills. It all happens in one place. You see, most folks think they're spending like 80 bucks a month on subscriptions. Try closer to 200. Yeah, $200 a month. And here's what's cool about Rocket Money. When you find the ones you're like, wait, I don't remember signing up for that. I don't even use that. You press one button and bam, it's done. No more hold times with customer service. No more silly emails back and forth. Rocket Money does all the work for you. By the way, they can even negotiate lower bills for you by up to 20%. Check this out. You just take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They can even help you create custom budgets based on your past spending and give you a heads up. Hey man, uh, you're spending a lot more than normal this month. Wouldn't that be nice? There's over 3 million folks saving money with Rocket Money. You could be next. A lot of these folks are saving over $720 a year. But how much can you save? Find out right now when you stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash JR. That's rocketmoney.com slash JR. Rocketmoney.com slash JR. This is Michael P.S. Hayes with the fabulous Freebirds. And baby, when you're hot, you're hot. And the hottest thing going in talk radio today is wrestling with Jim Ross here on AM 750 WSB. And if you think you're hot enough to handle it, call 872-0750 or 1-800-WSB-TALK. And welcome back, everyone. Thanks very much, Michael Hayes. Our meteorologist, Kirk Mellis, says that tonight it's going to be mo mostly cloudy and breezy and cool with a low of 38 degrees tonight. Uh, tomorrow, partly cloudy with a high of 58, low of 35. And right now in Atlanta, Georgia, it is 48 degrees. And we're here with Theodore Arlong and the Junkyard Dog. This is Wrestling with Jim Ross, and thanks very much for being with us here tonight, everyone. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, this weekend on TBS, uh, join us for the Power Hour at 9.05, uh, Saturday night, 6.05, uh, the WCW uh, Saturday night, uh, WCW Saturday night uh, uh, program is going to be uh, co-hosted by Jason Herbie uh, of the Wonder Years on ABC Television, which you can see right here on WSB uh, every week and uh, on on TV side. And of course, he's better known as the short boyfriend of Missy Hyatt. Also. Barry Wyndham will be our guest uh, in the interview segment. And then our two out of three fall match will be uh, Arn Anderson and Big Josh. And then uh, one week from today with uh, Tony Schiavone and Magnum TA, it'll be the Z-Man and Marcus Alexander Bagwell from Sprayberry High School in Marietta, Georgia, taking on Scotty Flamingo and J.T. Southern. And uh, you'll also see the Junkyard Dog and Brad Armstrong take on the Taylor Made Man and Greg the Hammer Valentine. And then also, of course, uh, worldwide wrestling seen nationally every weekend. Of course, in Atlanta, it's seen on Channel 69. Saturday nights at about 11 o'clock there with Joe and Bonnie. And uh, Rick Rude, the number one contender for the world title, will take on the TaylorMade Man, the number 10 contender, as the top 10 challenge uh, uh, begins on worldwide on TV this weekend. Of course, that's with Tony Schiavone and the very high-paid Jesse the Body Ventura. And, uh, Dog, do you feel like uh, taking some calls now? Oh, yeah. All right, let's uh, let's get after this thing. Let's go talk to uh, Miracle in Mountain View, Missouri. Hi, Miracle. Hi. How you doing? Fine. I've got a question for you and a quick comment, and I've got a comment for uh, JYD. All right, well, uh, shoot. Do you know if Lance Von Erich is still wrestling? I don't think he is. Okay, and I can't get the 900 hotline, but I thought I'd like to see the, uh, re all the retired wrestlers wrestle like Fritz Von Erich and Bruno and Harley and, you know, some of the uh, guys, older wrestlers wrestle. Like, a, like the, um, the version of the Masters Golf Tournament and Masters yeah, uh, Wrestling? Yeah, I'd especially like to see Jesse, too. All right, well, uh, we'll we'll pass that along. What's what's your question for the Junkyard Dog? Um, I've got a comment for J um, JYD. I really enjoy watching you wrestle, and I'm glad to see you back into WCW, and I really enjoyed the matches when... You wrestled against Harley when he was King Harley. Thank you very much. You're a very good wrestler. I'm glad to see you back. And hello, peanut head. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just teasing you. 
Glad to see you back too, Teddy. Thank you very much. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. And bye-bye. Bye, Miracle. Thanks for calling from uh, Mountain View, Missouri. And uh, let's uh, see here. We're going to go to talk to John in Atlanta. Hi, John. Hello. Good evening, Jim. How you doing? Good. Thanks for calling Wrestling with Jim Ross. You got oh. the junkyard dog and the Teddy Long here. We got quite an illustrious panel for you tonight, sir. Okay. I'd like to welcome uh, uh, welcome in junkyard dog. Thank you very much. And Teddy Long. Good evening. Thank you. I got two questions. All right. Uh, junkyard dog. Are you going to be in the war game? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, who you um, who you going to be wrestling? Cactus Jack. Cactus Jack. Okay. That ought to be a good match. Yeah, I, I hope, hope so. you come out. I hope you come out a winner. Thank you very much. Uh, second question, Jim Ross. Yes, sir. Um, it'll be nice to have Dusty Rose, uh, your guest, one Sunday night. Okay, I'll pass that along. I agree with that. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll certainly, he's been invited, and as soon as his, uh, schedule permits, we'll try to have him on. I mean, we appreciate your call tonight, John, from Atlanta. Thanks for calling. Let's go talk to another John. And, but this John is, uh, calling us from Alabama. Hi, John. It's Joel. It's Joel? Yes, sir. Okay, Joel, I'm sorry. It's All had right. John on the screen. So, uh, well, Joel, welcome to Wrestling with Jim Ross, and what's on your mind? Um, I have a question about the, the pay per view mm -hmm. that's coming in June. Yeah. Uh, do you know some of the matches in it? And has PN News left WCW? I think uh, PN News has left WCW or is preparing to. Uh, certainly thinking strongly about it. And uh, I, I, the, the, the card for the June pay per view has not been finalized and probably will not be uh, officially released until after May 17th. Okay. All right, thanks a lot. Again. You bet. Thank you for calling tonight from uh, Alabama. Let's talk to Sean in Stockbridge. Hi, Sean. Hi, how you doing? Good, thanks. Okay, I got a question for the dog and then a question for you and one quick comment. All right. Okay, first, uh, Junkyard Dog. Yeah. Um, considering how Cactus Jack is, he's uh, wild and a little unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Um, How are you planning to prepare for your match? Well, first of all, I, I've said my prayers like I always do the night before and keep myself in the, in the, in the best physical fit condition, especially my mind game. And I wrestled people like this before, you know. The only guy I ever wrestled outside of Cactus Jack Light was uh, God bless his and rest his soul now. He's, he's dead and gone was was Bruder, Bruiser Brody. Then I'll go go back with Colonel Brock Robler, which you might not know him. Then I could go with a guy like Abdullah. So, you know, you, I figured out of the three, I just try to use the best strategy because just like I'm talking to you now, Cactus Jack could be out there on the phone somewhere listening to him and trying to get my game plan. But I think I'll come out victorious on the thing. Because, you know, if it's down and nasty you want to get, I can do that. Okay. Um, um, Jim, Jim, you know a guy in the Global by the name of the Viper? Have you heard of him? Uh, I've seen him wrestle on TV a couple of times. Uh, no, I'm not real familiar with him, Sean, but I've seen him a couple of times. By his uh, wrestling uh, style, could, could you tell me if that's uh, Jake the Snake Roberts? Well, I think that the guy wants you to think it's Jake the Snake Roberts, but I can assure you that it, it is not Jake Roberts because uh, Jake Roberts is... Uh, been seen in other places at the same time the Viper was somewhere. So I think that's the impression that they would want one to uh, uh, assume, but that's not uh, Jake Roberts, I can tell you. Sean, thanks for calling us tonight. We appreciate it. Let's talk to, uh, uh, let's see, we're going to talk to Lynn and Marietta. Hi, Lynn. Hi, how are you doing, Jim Ross? Good, thanks for calling. How, how, how are you doing, Junkyard Dog and Fit all along? Doing real well. I'm doing fine. Um, I've got a question for you, Jim. I've got two questions. First of all, for you, Jim Ross, I cannot get a hold of your wrestling hotline because you went last night, but I heard of a divorce. Mm -hmm. I want to know which couple was getting divorced in wrestling. Well, the Dangerous Alliance says that uh, Ricky Steamboat's going to get a divorce from his wife because he's obsessed with Medusa. I don't believe that. And that's, I don't believe in that either because I think that Medusa's an ugly woman. Well, I wouldn't say she's an ugly woman, but uh, she certainly has a, a rather uh, a testy disposition. I don't think she'd be jumping out of bed and fixing anybody's eggs in the morning, but uh, what else lands on your mind? Also, um, I'd know from Theodore along, um, how long have you been a manager? Uh, for three and a half years, I was managing. And I really hate the, I really hate the people who call you a peanut head because you're not that. Well, you know, that was when I was the old Teddy Long. Now the people are, are going to get a chance to see the real Teddy Long, so we don't have to worry about the peanut head anymore. And um, for you, Junkyard Dog, I'd like to know how long have you been wrestling? Fourteen years. Fourteen glorious years, ladies and gentlemen. Lynn, thanks for your call tonight. Let's talk to Jim and Marietta. Hi, Jim. Oh, how you doing tonight? Good, thanks for calling. A couple issues I'd like to bring up. Uh, I was at the Omni when uh, Sting was injured wrestling uh, Big Van Vader. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm just wondering why it took so long, or maybe I missed it, for uh, WCW to make a report on Sting's injuries. Uh, I don't. What do you mean? I, I think well, I, I called the office a couple times last week. Oh, the receptionist may not have been been authorized to make a statement. I really couldn't. I couldn't say for that uh, branch of the business. I don't have any. Uh, uh, wouldn't have any knowledge of Jim, but I know that we we mentioned uh, a report on the match here on the show, and then we mentioned, of course, the, at the first opportunity on TV was uh, Saturday. Okay. Uh, the second thing I want to bring up uh, concerns Lex Luger who I don't know if he's in the WWF, but they have been publicizing mm -hmm. him for... Uh, he works for their sister organization, the WBF, the World Bodybuilding Federation. Would Is there any truth to uh, the rumor, and I've just heard a couple people mention this, that he was he just got tired of wrestling and wanted to uh, try yeah. bodybuilding? He, uh, he got a little burned out, and that's why he chose to make a career decision uh, and make a career change. Uh, fans, we'll be back right after this timeout. Now, more with America's leading wrestling broadcaster. It's Wrestling with Jim Ross. You can talk with Jim Ross and his guests by calling 872-0750. Now, here's Jim Ross. And welcome back, everyone, and thanks for being with us here on this uh, great Sunday night. We are having a discussion with uh, the godfather of WCW, Theodore R. Long, uh, doing a lot of uh, very positive public relations work in the Atlanta community, and uh, he's also the... Uh, a color analyst on uh, the WCW main event that's seen on Sports South here in the, throughout the South and on many other stations in syndication. He's also seen with on the uh, uh, Canadian version of the Power Hour. That's on uh, TSN every week with Eric Bischoff. So uh, he's getting uh, a lot of work. We've got a, we're going to be talking to someone here in a few moments about uh, uh, about that. Somebody wants to talk to Teddy about his broadcasting career. Uh, and also the Junkyard Dog is here, one of the best-known names in in the game today. Uh, junkyard dog, you know when the, when those wrestling dolls came out, you know, and, and the first the WWF had the wrestling dolls, and you were wrestling 85. there. Yeah, you had the first black wrestling doll, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, that thing sold like crazy, didn't it? It did real well for me and the family and internal revenue. And the, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was, uh, I mean, it kicked up pretty good. You know, you know, at that time the leading doll was out. You know, it was uh, Hulk Hogan, of course. Sure. And uh, I fell in third place because Iron Sheik at that time, the war was going over in Iran. And a lot of people was buying the Sheik doll. And, uh, so, right so the Hogan doll could beat the Sheik doll yeah, up. Yeah, and then, uh, but then they bought my doll out. My doll fell right in there. And he had like a one, two, three punch. One week, I'll sell Sheik. Next week, I'll sell him. But nobody never passed, surpassed Hulk Hogan, which at that time, you know, he's uh, still to the day to me. He's the best thing kicking on the surf right yeah. now. You know, I, I said to somebody one time that uh, uh, I felt like that... Uh, you know, you look at all these uh, allegations on, on well-known uh, wrestling personalities from various and sundry uh, things, some outlandish things, are, are yeah. very hard to believe that we don't need to get into tonight. But one of the things that ma people made a big big deal about is the steroid use. Yeah. Now, I know that years ago, you experimented, you used steroids, oh, yeah. if I'm, I'm not speaking out of school yeah. here. Yeah. But I know that, and that's not some of the things you tell the youngsters, that's not the the way to go, and you're not and you're not a steroid user at this point in time in your career, which I think is great. Yeah, I think matter of fact, I wanted to say here on the radio, the fans have noticed TV. I mean, gosh, you what dropped about fifty pounds? Sixty two pounds. Sixty two pounds. Yeah. That's I, great. I got a good training partner, Dwayne Bruce, and I trained together about twice a day. At one time, you know, I took about six months off, and I told you at that time, I said I see you in about six months, and right. you left. That's right, you did. And uh, I started training, but see, in, in other words, a lot of time you, you tell people. I'm going to do this, uh, I'm going to do that. But uh, some people uh, fail to realize you got to say it to yourself. you got to do this. So I forced myself to get into it. I said, well, hell, if uh, George Foreman could come back, if uh, sure. what's the guy named in baseball? My Nolan man, Ryan. Uh, Nolan Ryan could pitch. I said, I'm 39 years old, and the Lord gave me my half the strength to get up and walk out of this bed. I can start training myself again and uh, see what can I come up with. So I went in, I dropped off 62 pounds. I feel great, man. I'm down about... Uh, if I weigh in the day, I probably weigh three, two nine eight, three hundred. But I'm still trying to get on about two eighty five more. But I feel good, Jim, and uh, I figure if the Lord let me live in this year, this time next year, I'll be back in the rankings. I hope that uh, hope that Cactus Jack doesn't treat you like Alex Stewart uh, treated George Foreman the last time uh, they met. Did you see that fight? We we'll have with the brother George. He he uh, he decided to lay back and, and just take it easy and you know get a guy a break. I, I'm not breaking nothing, brother. I'm breaking bread when I'm home. 
<laughs> when I'm in that ring, i got to break something else. All right. All right. We're going to go to the back of the telephones here. This is Wrestling and Jim Ross on AM 750 WSB. And thanks for being with us here tonight. Wherever you're listening, we're talking to the junkyard dog of uh, professional wrestling fame and a tremendous competitor here in WCW and also uh, the godfather of WCW man doing a lot of very good things behind the scenes uh, and a lot, a lot of good things on TV too as far as that's concerned uh, Teddy Long let's talk to uh, Jason who's calling us from North Carolina hi Jason yeah I'd like to know what are some well-known pro wrestling schools and how could you get in touch with them What's uh you know you know anything about the, the, the what about uh, Joe Hamilton school? Uh, they got a school in uh, here in Georgia which is uh through WCW and a good friend of mine uh, again is is doing the training down there Dwayne Bruce. He's from uh, one of the state patrol one of the best I know that's training the guys and all you got to do to get a hold to Mr. Uh, Joe Hamilton uh, uh I know the number I don't know if I can give it out here or not Jim Ross. Is, but, uh, you know, I don't have right here on me, but, you know, Joe Hamilton tied up with, with WCW. You could always call, uh, Jason, you could call uh, the, the main office number at WCW. Uh, that number is 404-827-2066. And when you call that number, tell them you'd like to speak to Mr. Joe Hamilton about wrestling school information. All right. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Thank you, Jason, for calling us tonight from North Carolina. Let's go talk to uh, Vera in Rockdale. She has a question for the Junkyard Dog. Hi, Vera. Hey, how you doing? Good, thank you. I want to know where is Lars Anderson there, and what was Junkyard Dog toughest match? Well, I think Lars Anderson, the last I heard, was in Hawaii. Does anybody know anything up no, that day on that? There. Teddy, you know anything about that? Oh, that's the last I heard, too. You ain't seen Lars in the hood anywhere, have you? No, I haven't. No, he ain't, he ain't in town. Track. We know he ain't in town, then. If he, Teddy ain't seen him, he's not, in, he's not in Atlanta. I think he's in Hawaii. And JYD, what was your toughest match? Uh, right now, I believe it was uh, Holler Race. You know, I had, uh, over the years, I had about seven matches with Holler that I put in the top of my class. Holler Race and also Terry Funk. I put the two in the same class. Both uh, great veterans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great pride in what they do. And, uh, uh, you know, they, uh, boy, they spilled a lot of blood from coast to coast uh, in their career to uh, earn their living. Plus, they had the ring knowledge and then, uh, even made me even greater than uh, I ever thought to be. There you go. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot. We appreciate your call, Vera, tonight. On Wrestling with Jim Ross, let's talk to Brian, who's uh, got a question for the Junkyard Dog. Hi, Brian. How you doing tonight? Fine. Um, I got a question for Junkyard Dog and a question for Teddy Miller. All right. Okay, um, Junkyard Dog says, yeah. um, Hulk Hogan retired from WWF. What do you think he's doing? Well, he's probably doing like any other family man would be doing right now. He's probably home with his wife and kids and giving thanks to the good Lord uh, on, on a day which is Sunday and thanking him for all the things that he, he, he's contributed to him, which is uh, his wife and Two beautiful kids and his have some strength and still be able to get up and walk around. I heard he was going to, he may be uh, getting ready to do another movie. Hey, you know, as far as I know, you know, it's, that's as far as I know. You know, well, he's well, doing you, you, uh, I've never met Hulk Hogan in my career. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, what kind of guy is he? He's a Christian guy, man. He's a straight up guy, you know. He's an everyday guy. If you, if you meet dog, you meet him. That's why I put it. You know, he's a straight up guy. If he tell you it's raining outside, look outside, it's raining. But, you know, with a guy in his, with his, uh, sitting in his category and, and the kind of money and prestige you get, feel like he wouldn't be one of those guys with his nose in there, but he's not. That's cool. Good. Uh, Brian, what's your question for Teddy Long? Okay. You know, since he's, Teddy, since yes. he's low metal, it's so dangerous. Why do you go there with other wrestlers and stuff? Well, it's maybe dangerous to you, uh, but it's not dangerous to me. Uh, East Lake Meadows, in fact, I've already been in Bankhead Court, and uh, that's what I'm trying to get over to the people that to quit worrying about it's dangerous. It's dangerous everywhere. You can walk out your front door and something could happen. So those little kids that are over in East Lake Meadows, you know, they need somebody to come over there and see about them just like everybody else. So it's not dangerous to me. I'm going to the hood. It makes no difference where I go, and Junkyard Dog's going to go to the hood, and anybody else that I ask to go, they don't mind doing it because we want to see about the kids. These guys go with the, with the Red Dog unit won't go. And uh, I can tell you that, man. With Junkyard Dog along, I wouldn't mind. Uh, I, I was I, born and raised in this. I, I, feel I, feel rather, right. I would feel rather secure of their godfather with the with the dog around. Exactly. Uh, you ain't got to worry about nobody putting their hand on you when the dog's there. You there know, you, you go. got that famous head, but we'd have to put it on in the hood. Let's talk to Karen in Jonesboro. You're on Wrestling with Jim Ross on AM 750 WSB. Karen, how are you tonight? All right, Jim. How are you? Good, thank you. I've got uh, two questions about Brian. Um, I missed your show last week, and you uh, uh, Brian's having some kind of health problems. I know he had, uh... Brian's got a, a, a back injury that uh, he's having a real hard time uh, uh, shaking uh, this injury. He's had, a, what I guess, uh, for lack of a better term, a nagging back problem. It's been hurting him off and on for several weeks, and he seems like he's uh, having a hard time healing up, quite frankly. So uh, uh, 
Uh, he's really working hard to get over that because he's going to defend the title against his former tag team partner, the Z-Man, at uh, Russell at War 92 on May 17th. So yeah, he's... I can't wait to see that. I, I've uh, had cable installed just for these pay-per-views. Good deal. What I, I think they're great. All right. Um, my other question, I've got this book that says uh, Brian is a daredevil stunt pilot. Is there any truth to that? You know, I don't know if he's a pilot or not. Hey, I've heard of, I've heard a lot of stories about flying Brian out on the road, but I've I never heard him about flying in an airplane. Uh, but he's a great champion. He's tough as they come. Pound for pound, he's about as tough as anybody I've ever seen been around. He's a, he's a fighter, any dog. There you go. He's a fighter, and uh, he'll, he'll get uh, healed up. It should be a good match. Karen, thanks for your call tonight. And let's talk to uh, Maria in Atlanta. Hi, Maria. Hello. Um, I have a hello, um, Teddy Long, and hello, Junkyard Dog. How you doing? Hello, Maria. Um, Teddy Long, I think it's a, I think it's great what you're doing with the community. Um, more, um, I think a lot more people need to get out and do the same thing. Thank you. Um, Jim Ross, I have a question. Okay, Maria. Um, I would like to know why is it that Bobby Eaton never get any interview time? I know I've heard some rumors that he has a speech impediment. No, he doesn't have a speech impediment. He just doesn't like to talk in, on, on camera. He's just... He's a rather introverted guy when it comes to uh, talking, and he feels a little self-conscious, I think, about uh, he doesn't consider himself a great uh, communicator. Uh, he, he wrestled for so many years with Jim Cornette, who was such the exact opposite of that, <laughs> that he really had uh, rarely had a need to, to say anything. Cornette did all the talking. So Bobby is just a real laid-back guy when it comes to doing that. He'd rather do his talking in the ring. We've given him plenty of opportunities. He just doesn't uh, care to do it. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, and I have another question about Rick Rude. Um, is he does 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 he have a back injury? Does Rick Rude have a back injury? Yes. What are you getting at, Maria? I don't uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, I know. I think on re um, when I watched wrestling approximately two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Um. He. Kept, do you have your radio he kept, off? He kept, yeah, he kept favoring his back, you know, as if he oh, was yeah. hurt. He, well, no no more than a normal uh, bumps and bruises, I think. Uh, but I don't think he has any back problems, certainly not to the extreme of uh, flying Brian. But, Maria, thanks for calling tonight. Let's talk to uh, Brad and Marietta. You're on Wrestling with Jim Ross, Brad, and we appreciate it. Yo, man, I'm on, I'm on the radio right now. Uh, shut up, radio. Y'all turn it up. Dog, what's up? You, my man, you. Dog, what's up? Hey, man, Teddy Jam with you, man? Yeah. yeah. Teddy, Teddy Jam in the house. Yeah, yeah I'm man. in the house. I'm in the house, All brother. right, there, man. Dog, I seen you on TV just yesterday, man. You was doing it to the hammer, man. You, you did to the hammer and Terry Taylor. There you go. There yeah, you go. man. What's up? You, Jeez, man, I'm just in man. the house. You, you listen to this ball? All right, look here, man. Yeah. You gonna go for a tag belt, man? Are you wrong? Well, right now, I'm trying to get my head together, man, and get around. We're gonna try to get man, involved I... with each other, learn each other's style, and we might just go for something, you know? I'm so glad you came back, you know okay, what I'm saying? Brother, you don't have to come back. You know what I'm cooking, man? When you came back lean and mean, you, you know go. what I'm saying? There you Something go. Come back looking lean like the old dog of yesteryear. There you, you go. Sir. There you go. Shit, I was all over it. Man. All yeah. right, well, we, Brad, we appreciate it, man. You need to calm down. He's. <laughs> He's in a great mood tonight, isn't he, guys? He's in it, baby. He's in it's it. It's calls like that that makes this program what it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is Wrestling with Jim Ross. There's nothing else like it on radio, and we'll be back. This is the Stinger here for Jim Ross on AM 750 WSB. Give him a call and talk to him right now on 872-0750 or 1-800-WSB-TALK. Call now. And welcome back, everyone, uh, here on uh, the program with Junkyard Dog and Theodore Arlong, the godfather of WCW here with us. I do want to remind all of you that it, uh, we have a chance for a low of 38 degrees tonight. Tomorrow, the weather looks like it's going to be partly cloudy with a high of 58 and a low of 35 tomorrow night. Right now, it is 48 degrees here in Atlanta on West Peachtree. A little nippy out there. Yeah. The Hawks I, I thought it, I thought summertime was here. The Hawks are now, brother. Uh... I want to remind everybody that uh, Tony Schiavone will be setting in for me next week. Uh, I'm going to be taking a week off, and uh, he's going to try to have a Sting on here by uh, either here in the studio or on the telephone. So we hope to have the world's champion on the program, at least, uh, if nothing else, just, uh, for a pro possibly an interview uh, with Tony next week. So I hope you'll tune in next week. Tony Schiavone will be here, and uh, we'll be working on some guests this week. And I appreciate him setting in, and certainly appreciate you all tuning in again next week. And and getting in touch with Tony. So uh, that sounds pretty good, getting in touch with Tony. <laughs> he can give you some advice. He's got five children at home. 
the oldest one being eight. So he has more patience than anybody that I know. Let's talk to Jacob in Westville, Illinois. Hi, Jacob. Hi, uh, Mr. Ross. I was just wondering if there's any new information on if Jake the Snake was coming to WCW. No, uh, the Jake the Snake Roberts I know is not work, uh, working any longer for the WWF, and uh, I know that he has expressed some uh, interest in WCW, and I'm sure that they have an interest in him. He's a he's a superstar in, 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 in of sorts, no doubt about that. But nothing has been finalized, and I don't think that really anything officially can be done until he is uh, has his release from his former employer. Okay, and I was also wondering if you knew who the Dark Patriot was. The Dark Patriot? Uh-huh. The GWF Federation. No, I'm not real familiar with, with that uh, with that situation. I'm sorry, I can't help you there. Where is your Where are you Where are you calling from? Um, Westville, Illinois. Where is that near? It's about um, three hours south of Chicago. Okay. Well, we appreciate you calling tonight, and uh, thanks for listening to Wrestling with Jim Ross here on AM seven fifty WSB. Let's talk to Loretta in Dallas. Hi, Loretta. Hi, Jim. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Not too bad. Um, I'm visiting from New York, and I was wondering, um, I'd like to ask a couple questions and make a comment. Okay. Um, I was wondering, um, how often are you at the center stage? We're at the center stage about twice a month. We'll be there again next, as you heard, tomorrow, uh-huh. uh, 7 o'clock, and uh, we're going to be uh, Randy Owen of the country group Alabama will be one of my guest co-hosts. At center stage, we tape the WCW Saturday night programs. Yeah. So we're there tomorrow night, and I think we're back there on May the 11th. Okay. How do you get tickets for that? Uh, the tickets are free, and... Uh, uh, they're, I'm not so sure if they're available at the door or if you have to call the WCW office. Uh, you can call 827-2066 tomorrow and ask them for the information on that. Okay, then. Okay. I'd like to ask um, Tay Long, um, what's the hardest thing about being a manager? Well, uh, the hardest thing about being a manager is keeping up uh, with the guys that uh, you manage and also taking care of a lot of their uh, plane and travel arrangements, their hotel arrangements, and then you also got to see about yourself, too. So looking out for you guys is about the hardest part. Thanks a lot, Loretta, for your call tonight, and uh, we hope to see the TV taping at the center stage tomorrow. Let's talk to Eric in Atlanta. You're on Wrestling with Jim Ross on AM 750 WSB, Eric. Yeah, how's it going, Jim? Good, thanks. Um, I'd, I'd just like to make a comment. I'm happy that JYD is back. And I was just wondering for Teddy Long, um, are you going to think about managing some more? Well, of course I'm uh, going to do that, but right now I'm concentrating uh, basically on uh, working with the kids. And uh, after I get this project on the way and get it to going uh, like I want it, then uh, who knows, I may start back into managing. And he's got a promising broadcast career, too, that's keeping him pretty busy, Eric. So uh, catch uh, Teddy on Sports South on Wednesday nights on the WCW Syndicated Main Event. Let's talk to uh, Mike in North Carolina. Hi, Mike. Hi, Jim. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Yes, uh have y'all still got the three day rule? If the if the champion don't uh, defend their belt in thirty days, they get stripped of it. Because of what happened and the advice of Sting's doctors, uh, Mike, that uh, Sting has been given a, a three week uh, a break in that for a medical reason. So, uh, and that was a special situation that doctors allowed. I don't know a lot about it. I know it's going to perhaps open a can of worms, but uh, he's not in danger of losing the title because of the 30-day rule. Let's talk to Steve in uh, Lafayette. Where are you calling from, Steve? Uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, right. I grew up watching uh, the dog early in his career in the old Mid-South, and I'd like to ask him a couple of questions. All right. Um, you, you, uh, past classic and brutal brutal feuds with uh, Butch Reed or classics down here. And I was wondering, is that affecting your career now in like a negative way? Because both of y'all took a great pounding. And also I'd like to ask, is how would you like, how would you compare the Dangerous Alliance to some of the uh, old Devastation Incorporated? Well, it, it fits about the same. You know, both of them uh, was, was uh, all the guys, when they, they, both of us was great athletes, but when you get the butchery, he's a different type of individual if you compare him with Iron Anderson. But, well, yeah, it takes a toll on your body, but that's where you got to halfway stay in the gym and not only keep your body fit, you got to keep your mind uh, knowledge-wise, too. So, you know, it's a hard stress on you. We appreciate your call tonight, uh, Steve. Thanks for calling from Lafayette, Louisiana. We always love coming down there. As a matter of fact, WCW back down in Lafayette in uh, the next few weeks. Well, Godfather, you're gonna, your big project's coming up on May the 4th. Now, tell us real quickly about that again. Uh, May the 4th, the Jonesboro South uh, Community Center over there. Uh, uh, Jamie Dukes with the Atlanta Falcons, the Steiners, the Z-Man, uh, Ron Simmons, uh, 
Uh, some of the Atlanta Hawks players are going to be there, and uh, a lot of people from uh, V103, Derek Shelton, uh, just a whole bunch of people will be in the hood to see the kids. That's on May the 4th, 5 o'clock p.m., uh, Jonesboro South. Jonesboro South. And uh, how, you know, how, to, how, to, how would somebody find that if they're from out of town? Well, you could uh, come down uh, 75, get off at uh, Cleveland Avenue, and you would go east, and uh, Cleveland Avenue change, go dead's end into Jonesboro Road, and it'll take you right into it. Sounds like a good deal, and you're doing some great work. And uh, Thank you, Jim. We appreciate you uh, taking time to be with us. JYD, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. You're one of my, one of my old buddies for a long time. I appreciate you, you being here with us. Thank you very much. I'd like to say thanks to uh, WSB. Uh, 750 for having me here, and I look forward to coming back anytime, Jim. And uh, God bless each and every person that's out there listening in. Keep your health and strength up. Keep saying your prayers. Be good to the family and keep moving. There you go. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, dog, and thanks, Godfather. Well, fans, don't forget now, tomorrow night, center stage, uh, we'll be back 7 o'clock starting time. We're going to tape two broadcasts of the WCW Saturday night program. The tickets are free. It's on West Peachtree, about a block from the Art Center Marta Station. Randy Owen of the country group Alabama will be one of our guests there tomorrow night. We've got some great wrestling action. Uh, we're going to have uh, Barry Wyndham and Stunning Steve Austin in a rematch for the TV title. Should be great. We've got some big TV things coming up. We're going to be in Birmingham Tuesday and in the Omni on Sunday night. Don't forget, Tony Schiavone will be setting in for me next uh, Sunday night. Uh, we're going to try to have a conversation with the world's heavyweight champion at that time. For Phil Reed and everyone here at WSB and my guests, I'm Jim Ross saying good. All right, Jim, we should take this minute to remind everybody that WrestleQuest from MAGA Cat Studios is now available. I can't believe this is real, but I'm actually in a video game. How silly is that? But it's not just me. It's all your favorites, man, like the Macho Man Randy Savage, Andre the Giant, Jake the Snake, Diamond Dallas Page, Jeff Jarrett, and so many more. Even names that you wouldn't expect to see in here, like Coco Beware, Bruiser Brody. I think this might be Bruiser Brody's first ever video game. What's cool, though, is the roster spans decades and various promotions featuring talent from all over the world. And we're talking a lot more than just statues. Each legend has their own side quest, and players can earn their wrestler signature gear or the right to call upon their finishing moves in combat. In some cases, the wrestler can even join the player as their manager. Man, they make it super fun, too. You can cut promos on your opponents before battling out in the ring. You can customize your walkout routine, like pick your theme music and your pyro and all that jazz. This is so fun, man. I think WrestleQuest is like a love letter to classic role-playing games, the pixel art of our youth, and really the golden era of professional wrestling. So powerbomb your way through a massive game where the worlds of toys, action figures, and wrestling all collide. Think of it as like a sweaty, spectacular pro wrestling take on that cherished Japanese role-playing game genre. We're talking over 40 hours of core story content you're absolutely going to love WrestleQuest. It's available now for PC, consoles, and mobile. That's worth repeating. Uh, if you don't have consoles in your house, but you're just an old school wrestling fan, no problem. You can play it on your PC and even better, play it on your mobile device. Jay Lethal was playing it over the weekend in Chicago, and you will be too. Check it out. It's WrestleQuest, available now. Now, here's Jim Ross. Thank you very much, and hello again, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast. Uh, beautiful night here in Atlanta. Hope you're having a good weekend, and uh, certainly thank you for being with us here tonight. We're going to have an open line tonight. We're going to talk about whatever's on your mind uh, that uh, is going on right now in the world of wrestling. A lot of things are taking place, uh, wrestling in the uh, public eye more than uh, normal in the last couple of weeks. Some of it has been positive, some of it has not. Uh, also... Uh, we will be talking about some of the pending events coming up in WCW. I know tonight uh, a great card going on as we speak in Baltimore at the arena. Uh, and then in the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey, that will be on this uh, Tuesday night uh, up, up in uh, East Rutherford. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to be at center stage here in Atlanta to tape uh, uh, our uh, national television broadcast of our Saturday night program. And that Saturday night program is going to have a major facelift beginning this Saturday. I'll be telling you about that in a couple of moments. But this Wednesday night, we'll be taping at Center Stage in Atlanta on West Peachtree, about a block from the Art Center Marta Station. We'll start at 7 o'clock. Tickets are free for the television taping. Monday night, we'll be down in Macon at the Coliseum in Macon. That'll be Monday night, April the 7th. Uh, and an uh, outstanding card signed for uh, Macon. And we certainly look forward to seeing all the fans uh, in that area on Monday, April the, uh, the 7th. And then WCW back uh, here in Atlanta. Uh, that'll be, of course, in the Omni 
on Sunday, April the 12th, 7.30 starting time. Five championship matches signed for the Omni on uh, Sunday, April the 12th. Tickets on sale now at all Ticketmaster outlets and uh, throughout uh, Atlanta. Includes Turtles and Peaches and all kinds of good places. But five championship matches signed for that event. It's really going to be a big card. Sting, a big band Vader for the world title. The Steiner Brothers to challenge Arn Anderson and beautiful Bobby for the world tag team titles. And Ricky Steamboat meets Ravishing Rick Rude for the U.S. Heavyweight Championship. Just three of the matches signed for the Omni on the 12th. And uh, as I mentioned, this Saturday will be the first broadcast of the new WCW Saturday Night. It's going to, uh, of course, be on at 6.05. Can you believe that wrestling has been occupying the 6 to 8 o'clock time slot on TBS going? This is the 20th year, and we're happy to say that the ratings are just tremendous. Uh, it's one of the highest rated cable programs in America, as a matter of fact, and it's the longest running wrestling program on cable in America and we're going to make a little face uh, lift I guess of sorts you could say and some people I think are really going to like it and obviously uh, some people are not going to like it as well perhaps as what we've been doing but I think that the new format certainly has an opportunity uh, to be very entertaining and still uh, retain a great deal of wrestling content uh, the, each, each week I'll have a guest co-host this week it will be Jesse the Body Ventura each week we'll have a two out of three fall main event match. This week it'll be for the TV title, stunning Steve Austin defending against uh, the Z-Man. Uh, we'll, each week we'll have a special in-ring, in-depth interview. This week that will be with Ron Simmons. So I, I think the show's got a real good opportunity to, uh, to be entertaining and to be exciting. And I know that once we uh, get into it a few weeks, get the bugs worked out, it, sh it should be uh, real entertaining. But we think it's going to be a lot of fun this week. We really enjoyed doing that program. And if you'd like to see how we're going to tape the other broadcasts on Saturday night and be a part of the studio audience, that's what we're going to be taping this Wednesday at Center Stage. So uh, also in the news, uh, I, I talked to Gordon Soley last night. He called me uh, uh, during the uh, basketball games. Uh, and uh, Gordon attended the, in Studio City, California, the uh, Cauliflower Alley Banquet for past and present wrestlers. And they were, uh, Gordon was telling me about a lot of the awards that were was given out. Uh, Woody Strode, a uh, wrestler who later became an actor, uh, was one of the uh, recipients. Uh, Stanley Weston, a uh, great publisher of wrestling magazines. Danny Hodge, of course, from my home state of Oklahoma. Uh, one of the greats of all time and the former uh, NWA junior heavyweight champion was uh, honored, along with Diamond Lil, a lady midget wrestler, and Penny Banner, who's... Um, married to uh, Johnny Weaver, living over in uh, the Carolinas. Donna Kristen Tell, an old-time lady wrestler. I don't hope she didn't hear that. She probably beat me up. Uh, Debbie Combs, Bell Star, Hardbolt Haggerty. A lot of uh, big names were there, and Gordon Sully was there along with Luthez. And I hope someday we can take a camera crew to that event because I, I really believe it would be great for the nostalgia buffs that follow wrestling. And also, Gordon told me that some of you fans may remember a tag team many years ago, maybe 20 years ago, by the name of uh, Gypsy Joe and Gypsy Jean. Well, I remember Gypsy Joe, but I didn't really remember Gypsy Jean. And uh, the uh, Gypsy Jean has been murdered. And uh, well, he was found dead this weekend in Tampa. He uh, last wrestled about 20 years ago, but had about a 20 or 25-year career uh, throughout the United States, a lot in the southeast, and then finally residing in uh, in Florida. So Gordon Soley passing along the information on the Cauliflower Alley Banquet and on the uh, murder of uh, former wrestler Gypsy Jean. Well, we're going to take calls uh, tonight, and we're going to take a lot of them, we hope. I uh, hope you'll be a part of it. We're at 872-0750 here in Atlanta, our toll-free number nationally. We're heard in over 30 states tonight. Is 1-800-WSB-TALK. We're talking about professional wrestling. We're talking about specifically WCW wrestling or anything that's on the minds of our listeners. And we're going to uh, go to the telephones and start talking, first of all, with Kenny in Union City. Kenny, you're on Wrestling with Jim Ross. Kenny, you there? I guess Kenny didn't uh, stick around. Are you there, Kenny? Yeah. Okay. What's on your mind, my friend? Um, I have a question for you. Did you like working with Missy High? Yeah, I like working with Missy High quite well. She's very, uh, very entertaining. I, I've never learned any in-depth wrestling knowledge from Missy Hyatt, but uh, she certainly was entertained to be around uh, for more than one reason, Kenny. You'll understand more when you get older. Uh, let's talk to Chris and Conyers. Hi, Chris. Hey, Jim. How you doing? Good. Uh, I got two questions, and my friend's got one for you. Okay. All right. Uh, the first one's when's Diamond Stug going to be returning? 
Well, he's got a pretty serious arm injury, and I'm not I'm not sure when he's going to be released from doctor's care. He had a, a severely torn uh, bicep and a lot of el- problems with his elbow and had to have major surgery. So I'm not so sure when he's going to be back available. Uh, you know if uh, Bam Bam Bigelow or Crush may be coming in? Bam Bam Bigelow? Or, yeah, or Crush. I don't... Bam, there's a chance that Bam Bam Bigelow might come in because he's the regular tag team partner over in Japan, of course, as you may know, of a big Van Vader. Uh, but uh, there's a chance of him. But the other guy, I don't think so. All right. Uh, and I read in my um, magazine that uh, Williams and Gordy had wrestled in WCW and pro wrestling this week. Uh, that they have? Yeah. Well, they both have individually, but they haven't uh, as a tag team yet. All right. And uh, I got one more question. All right. You're loaded tonight, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, is it going to be five on five at War Games this year? It is going to be five on five at War Games, and that'll be on pay per view on Sunday, May the seventeenth. Chris, thank you for your call. And Sean and Stockbridge, how you doing tonight? You're on wrestling with Jim Ross. Pretty good. Uh, I want to talk about four things. Uh, first, I want to talk about newcomers to the WCW. Mm-hmm. Uh, you asked last week a guy by the name of uh, I'm not sure of his name, but he brought up a few points about wrestlers from the USWA coming in like Jeff Jarrett or Jeff Gaylord and I was wondering if either of them or either Paul Orndorff or Paul Roma or Crush or Brian Adams are coming into Crush, Brian Adams, no. Paul Roma's uh, boxing right now. He's trying to be a boxer. Uh, There's always the opportunity that uh, uh, you know, some of those men you mentioned would, would wrestle here but right now discussions aren't going ongoing with them and that doesn't mean we're not interested but you know uh if a guy is interested in coming here oftentimes they'll make the the uh gesture by making a phone call or get in touch with someone so it's a two-way street but uh, right now none of the guys you mentioned are uh, on their way here okay next uh is lex luger currently employed by wcw no he's not okay because i saw him this weekend you probably heard about this but uh he was during a WWF broadcast, a commercial for the World Bodybuilding Federation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's and, what he's doing now, is bodybuilding. Okay. Uh, two more things. First, I want to tell you a few matches I'd like to see. And You've already said that one of them signed Steve Austin and Sting for the title. Uh, when can we see Steve, that match? No, it's Steve Austin and the Z-Man for the TV title. That's going to be this Saturday on TBS. Oh, okay. Uh, and how about Rick Rude and Barry Windham for the U.S. title? Well, I think it'd be a good match. It'd be a good match, John. I appreciate that. Uh, good, good suggestion from our friend Sean and Stockbridge. Now let's uh, quickly go to Chris and Marietta. Hi, Chris. Hey, Mr. Ross. How you doing? Uh, oh, sorry. God bless you. Uh, you got a cold? Yeah, uh, kind of. All right. Um, I've got three questions. Hurry. Do you have anything um, inf- information about the war games? So it's going to be two five-man teams, and the teams are not yet finalized. I got a feeling Sting will be on one team. And that the Dangerous Alliance will compro- comprise the other five, but uh, hasn't been finalized. And my second of the third questions: When is Scotty Flamingo going to first wrestle? It'll be a couple of weeks yet. Still there? Uh huh. Oh. And when is is Jim Ross coming to WCW? Who? Jim Jim Cornette. Jim Jim Ross is already in WCW. Yeah. I'm very I'm, I'm very indiscreet, uh, indiscreet uh, here, uh, Chris. Uh, Jim Cornette. I wish Jim Cornette was. Uh, on his way to WCW, but uh, that's not in the cards right now. He's a, a heck of a talented guy and a very, uh, very, very successful manager, but he's uh, involved in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. I'd love to have him as a guest on the program sometime. Maybe we'll try to do that. Fans, you're listening to Wrestling with Jim Ross on AM 750 WSB, and we'll be back with your calls right after this. Here. And welcome back, everyone, to the program. This is Jim Ross on uh, News Talk Radio AM 750 WSB. And our meteorologist, Kurt Mellis, says that uh, tonight we can expect scattered showers and a low of 54 degrees in Atlanta. And tomorrow, scattered showers continue with the possibility of a thunderstorm. Tomorrow's high 63. Tomorrow night's low 47. And right now it's 57 degrees here on Peachtree in Atlanta. And uh, we have, uh, well, the phones are really rocking and rolling tonight. Our producer, Daryl Harris, doing a great job of keeping these calls coming and i do want to i'll get back to the phones momentarily but i do want to remind you again that our new wcw saturday night program debuts this saturday at 605 eastern time we'll talk more about that before we go off the air also one week from today on tbs you'll see the uh uh two-hour special of the uh, wcw main event with tony Schiavone and magnum ta missy hyatt uh, should be a really an outstanding program. Some great matches signed, including uh, Rick Steiner and beautiful Bobby Eaton in a one-on-one match, uh, plus a six-man tag team match, Ricky Steamboat 
uh, Barry Wyndham, Dustin Rhodes will take on Rick Rude, Arn Anderson, and Larry Zabisco. And I'm going to have a conversation with Harley Race and Big Van Vader on the Ross Report. That will be on the main event uh, one week from today at 6.05 Eastern Time, two hours. Hope you'll join uh, uh, the folks for that one. And also, don't forget that if you're in Atlanta, that you can watch Worldwide Wrestling with Tony Schiavone and Jesse Ventura beginning on April the 11th. But right, the show is on right now on Saturday nights on Channel 69 in Atlanta. 11 o'clock Saturday night uh, with Joe Pettacino and Blonnie, Bonnie Blackstone. And we certainly uh, uh, enjoy watching that wrestling block. It's on Saturday nights uh, from 8 until the wee hours. But W Worldwide comes on at uh, 11 o'clock. Let's go back to the telephones and take some more calls here. We're going to get to work here, earn our money. Robert, how you doing tonight? Yeah, I'm fine. What's I got, like, three quick things and a comment. Okay. That, um, do you know what the name of a Rat in a Man's theme music is? Because I heard it on a commercial somewhere else. That... No, I don't. I'm sorry. Um, somebody told me Kevin Sullivan's dead, is he? No, Kevin Sullivan's alive and well. And how long do you think a match would go, and who do you think would win between Big Van Vader against Abdul the Butcher and Steel Cage? Well, I don't think it would probably go very long, uh, but I, I think because of uh, his, uh, maybe his youth and his uh, conditioning, that Big Van Vader would probably uh, come out on top, but it certainly would not be a very pretty match, to say the least. Let's talk to Joel in Alabama. Joel, where are you calling from? From Albertville, Alabama. Where is that? Uh, between Huntsville and Gadsden. Okay. Well, what's on your mind tonight? Uh, I have two questions. One of them is... WCW planning any events in Huntsville, Alabama, if you know of? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but uh, we we uh, have been there on many, many occasions. I yeah. mean, because we drive over there from here in Atlanta. It's a beautiful drive, as a matter of fact. But I don't uh, know, uh, Joel, right off the top of my head of any events scheduled there. I'll try to look during the news. If you keep listening, we'll, uh, we'll bring that information to okay. you. Okay. And is Jake Roberts coming to the WCW? Uh, as of right now, he's uh, gainfully employed in the WWF and scheduled to wrestle at WrestleMania. Uh -huh. So uh, what happens after WrestleMania is anybody's guess. So, but right now, uh, no. Well, I had heard that his dad works for WCW. Well, uh, his uh, his father's in a uh, in, on, in, in within our company, but uh, wouldn't have a bearing on uh, whether uh, Jake Roberts came here or not. That would okay. it's totally. Two separate issues. Okay, well, I think K. Allen Fry has been doing a great job with WCW today. Yeah, he's doing a good job. He's a uh, he's a real uh, he's a real hardworking man, and I th he's doing a good job. He's making some hard decisions, but he's making some fair ones, and I think that's uh, what it takes. All right, thanks Th a lot. Thank you for calling us from Alabama tonight. Let's go back to uh, our telephones and talk to uh, Joseph in Shaker Heights, Ohio. You're on Wrestling with Jim Ross on AM 750 WSB. Hey Jim, how you doing? Good. How are you tonight? Brian, um, you hear about rest, the main events for WrestleMania 8? WrestleMania 8? Yeah, I'm pretty familiar with them. Flair and Savage and Hogan and uh, Vi and Vicious Justice. Yeah, what do you think about the Flair one? Well, I'm sure it'll be a great match. Uh, both those guys can really wrestle. And um, I was wondering if you were, th you were talking about Crush earlier. Mm -hmm. He's wrestling in the Pacific Northwest, I think. Yeah, he. Uh, I think he's from that area. I heard he was going back to the work for the WWF, but I have nothing to base that on. I, I just know that he hasn't had any conversation with our organization. Yeah, because he was in demolition in the WWF, and they split up. Right. What else, Joseph, on your mind tonight? And um, um, how did Van Hammer get his nickname? I don't have any idea. I'll have to have him on the program sometime and ask him. I couldn't answer that one. Joseph, thanks for calling us tonight from Shaker Heights, Ohio. And we're going closer to Atlanta now and talk to Russ, who is in Marietta. Hi, Russ. Hi, Mr. Ross. How are Great. you? Um, I have two quick questions. Okay. Okay. Um, do you know what happened to Marty Gennetti of the Rockers? I, I believe that Marty Gennetti has had some problems, out-of-ring problems, or uh, some personal stuff. Uh, problems that I really don't care to get into here, but uh, they have uh, precluded him from returning to action in the WWF. Um, yes, my second question is, uh, do you think Lex Luger's going to the WWF to wrestle? Well, I think eventually Lex Luger's going to the WWF to wrestle. I think that uh, he will, uh, they will subtly use him on TV, as he did this weekend, uh, in uh, the posture of a bodybuilder to keep his awareness and keep his name in front of the uh, wrestling uh, viewers. 
so that when uh, contract uh, restrictions allow it, he'll be able to uh, wrestle for the WWF, which will probably either be sometime at the end of this year or the uh, sometime next year unless something unforeseen happens. But I think right now it's uh, basically just kind of a camouflage situation. He's not going to be a bodybuilder for uh, He's going to be, he's a wrestler. I mean, he has a great body. There's no doubt about it. But uh, he's there with that company to become a wrestler. And the bodybuilding thing just happens to be a nice, convenient way of uh, getting him on board a little early. Let's talk to J.D. Uh, in Decatur. Jim. Uh, yes, sir. How you doing? Good. Hey, good. Uh, I was wondering, uh, what ever become of uh, the superstar? Well, you know, I, I think that he's, the re for best of my knowledge, uh, the superstar is retired from wrestling now, still lives in the Atlanta area. He was a tremendous wrestler in his day, I can well, tell I, you. That. Oh, I remember him when I was growing up, and uh, he was really awesome. And, uh, you know, he had made the statement that if uh, he ever became uh, the world champion, he would unmask, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, just curious if why he got out. If he just... Well, I think just uh, like a lot of us, you know, he's, he was on the road for many, many years, and it really takes a toll on your body takes a toll on you physically and uh, even though he stayed in great shape all the time it's just a it's just a tough grind and you know there comes a time where a man sometimes wants to stay home and watch his kids grow up so oh yeah that's a, he just retired didn't he? that's as <laughs> far as i know that's what he's done well he he gave us a great entertainment and he was a, a terrific athlete and uh i would really like to uh send my sympathy out to uh brett wayne sawyer mm -hmm. and uh his family uh, because of uh, Buzz. Yeah, yeah, that was... Yeah, I know uh, Brett personally, and, uh, you know, that kind of shocked me when I heard about Buzz. And, and uh, the bad thing about it was, um, unfortunately, I missed the TV program about it. And uh, I kind of heard about what happened, you know, mm -hmm. here to say. And uh, that was really bad news. It sure was, J.D. We appreciate your calling out, my friend. for call And thanks for calling... Uh, Wrestling with Jim Ross, uh, this is News Talk Radio AM 750 WSB, and we'll be back. Now, it's Wrestling with Jim Ross on News Talk Radio AM 750 WSB. You can talk with America's leading wrestling broadcaster and his guests. Call 872-0750. Now, here's Jim Ross. And welcome back, everyone. Thanks for being with us here tonight on the program. Uh, we'll be, we're taking your calls in an open night talking about wrestling. And uh, a lot of questions tonight, a lot of good calls uh, thus far. And we're going to continue to take your calls momentarily. Don't forget that uh, this Wednesday night, the national television taping of WCW Saturday Night, our new Saturday night broadcast, uh, will be uh, held at center stage. That's this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Tickets for that TV taping are free. And then we return to the Macon, Georgia Coliseum on Monday, April the 7th, and then back, of course, in Atlanta's Omni on Sunday, April the 12th, 7.30 in the Omni, uh, and that's really going to be a big card. We talked about uh, five championship matches assigned for the Omni on that night. Uh, should be a great night for everyone, and I hope you can uh, join us there. Tickets on set at all Ticketmaster outlets. And don't forget our television programs this weekend. Uh, a lot of action on the Power Hour starts off at seven or 9.05 uh, uh, in Saturday morning. I should know. I'm on that program. I should remember that, but uh, I'm having problems not reading my own writing. I got out of the news a minute early. We went to news a minute early, folks. I've, I've had, uh, I can't read my own writing. I need to slow down here. Uh, Saturday night, uh, WCW Saturday night uh, debuts, 6.05. Jesse the Body Ventura there uh, as our guest co-host. Two out of three fall main event will be one of the highlights weekly of that program. And then a two-hour WCW main event with Tony, Missy, and Magnum next Sunday. And don't forget Tony Schiavone on Worldwide Wrestling, <clears throat> excuse me, on Channel 69 here in Atlanta, 11 o'clock Saturday night. So let's go back to the telephones and talk to uh, Butch here on Wrestling with Jim Ross. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Michigan. How are you, Jim? Uh, just fine, Butch. Where at Michigan are you? By Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo. Do you know where that is? Yeah, great win for your team today, huh? The Wolverines? Yeah. You got it. Or yesterday. Uh, when was that? When was that game? That's today, right? wasn't it? It sure was, Jim. It sure was. All right. I've got uh, three questions, and I'm going to make them brief because I know you're a busy man, Jim. But before uh, I get to that, could you please clear up to myself and to a lot of my friends, and I'm sure people across the country, why has Buzz Saw how did Buzz Sawyer die? Can you reveal that? Uh, I only heard that... Uh, uh, I know he was found on his front porch by his wife. Oh, my. Uh, I know that uh, 
uh, it was uh, not uh, a, a foul play situation like he had been shot or something like that. They uh, were going to do an autopsy on him, and to the best of my knowledge, Butch, the results of that autopsy have not been made public. Tremendous uh, loss. Yeah, oh, he was a great athlete. That was tremendous loss. Uh, my first question is, last week you mentioned that the you were going to have an NWA tag team tournament. I was wondering, could you give the top contenders for the NWA tag team well, I, the uh, the plans, uh, Kay Allen Fry made the announcement that WCW had uh, secured the rights to televise uh, the NWA World Tag Team Tournament. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's still in the planning stages, but I do know that they have contacted uh, organizations other than WCW to have teams compete in this. So it's not like it's going to be a WCW company-wide tournament. That's, that's good, because that's what my fear was. Yeah, uh, uh, from yeah. the best of my knowledge, there's going to be uh, probably a couple of teams in, from Japan, maybe a team from Puerto Rico. I know they talked to the Mexican promoters about getting a representative from Mexico. They've talked to somebody in Germany about a German team. So I, I think that they're trying to make it have a real genuine international flavor. And perhaps the gin clash to have it. That's great. Second of all, uh, I, know I was a huge fan of the Four Horsemen. I am totally Blanchard. Uh, now, I know he was doing minister work for a while. Does he have any intentions at all of coming back to Russell? And if not, why not? Well, I think that, uh, uh, to the best of my knowledge, Tully is very happy doing what he's doing right now. Uh, there was an erroneous rumor in the wrestling business that... Uh, uh, we we wanted to hire him at one time and decided not to. Basically, when Tully uh, left the WWF, he wanted to make some changes in his life, and he did. And now he's doing some this ministry uh, work that he's doing. He's it's very uh, gratifying for him. He's got a lot of peace of mind. He's home with his family. He's got a young uh, child. Uh, I don't think he wants to get back into wrestling, quite honestly. Oh, and so he's happy. That's he's very fun. happy, and as long as the guy's happy, then. You know, let's just uh, pat him on the back and tell him to keep up the good work. Sure, that's all that counts. And lastly, Jim Ross, uh, I'd like to to name a couple of people that I'd like to see that come to the league that were there at one time. That were there only for such a short time. There was a remarkable athlete by the name of Conan there last summer. He was a Mexican champion. Yeah, you know, I, I, we tried to get him here and uh, great. just couldn't get to terms with the guy. And I think he's under contract with the WWF, but I'm not sure. Well, Larry Cameron and Doug Furness were there also, and I'd mm -hmm. love to see them. And also Claxton Blackheart, the uh, the manager. So I'd like to see those three. If you could, I think Conan and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Furness and... And uh, Cameron would be a wonderful addition, yeah. as well as Clark. So I think you're in need those, of another. All those guys are good pieces of talent. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I know Doug Furness personally. He's from uh, Oklahoma. I remember I officiated one of his high school football games one time. When hey, he... Jim, do you have any questions for me? So uh, It worked out pretty well. Do I have any questions for you? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Okay, well, I, keep, I, keep up the good work, Jim. I will, and uh, thanks for calling us tonight from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Okay, guys, let's take a time out right now and give you a little peek behind the curtain. JR is feeling better than ever. He's traveling just like he was back in the good old days. Now with AEW expanding that schedule, how does he keep doing it every single day? Well, he starts every day with one scoop of delicious AG one. It really does check all the boxes. He's going to have more mental clarity. He's going to sleep better. He's just going to feel like he's got more energy, improved digestion. Literally it checks all the boxes. You see, AG1 replaces your multivitamin, your probiotic, and everything else in one easy and delicious drinkable habit. That's right, a drinkable habit. Think of AG1 as like your foundational nutritional supplement. It's going to deliver comprehensive nutrients to whole body health. Now, let me just run through what that means. I mean, it's getting rid of all your minerals, all your pre and probiotics, all your adaptogens, and it's even got a greens blend. All of this exists in just one simple scoop of water. It's never been e ever easier than that. All told, you're talking like 75 different high quality vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source superfoods. And listen, let's be honest, as we get older, we gotta start taking better care of ourselves, but it can be a lot to think, all right, I gotta take this in the morning and this in the afternoon and this in the evening. What if it was just one scoop and a cup of water every day? That's what AG1 does for you. And don't just take our word for it. These cats have got like more than 7,000 five-star reviews. And I have to be honest, when my wife first introduced me to the idea, I thought, 
Yeah, but I bet it tastes well. Not so good. I was wrong. It tastes great. It makes you feel good. You will feel more productive. I challenge you to just try it. Just see what you think. You see, AG one was created in 2010. They've helped millions of people get their morning started on a healthier foundation ever since it's going to save you time. It's going to save you money. I just can't recommend it enough. If you're looking for a simpler, effective investment in your health, I want you to try AG one. As a matter of fact, we'll get you five free AG one travel packs and a free one year supply of vitamin D with your first purchase. Just go right now to drink one.com slash JR. That's drink one.com slash JR. Check it out. You'll feel better. You'll sleep better. You'll be more productive, man. It's everything you're looking for. It's drink one.com slash JR. It was his nickel. So we just let him talk. Uh, Mark in Avondale. How you doing? Fine, Mr. Ross. Okay. One thing I'd like to point out to the gentleman that uh, uh, mentioned the superstar. Yeah. He did, in fact, not retire. He was one half of the tag team demolition. He wrestled his axe. Right. And uh, they mentioned the rules. I've noticed there's two rules that seem to have gone down the pike. Well, don't get me started on the rule book. That's a sore subject with me. And the rule is 30-day limit. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when... Uh, Luger wrestled in Japan on January the 4th. He, mm-hmm. didn't, he didn't wrestle until Super Brawl. Mm-hmm. And by the time they said Sting will make, has he already made his first title defense? Who, Sting? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that goes in. But the main thing... He's defended the title several times, as a matter of fact. Okay, yeah, the, yeah. Deal, the deal is, is that I ask that same question to people in the WCW offices. How can we have a 30-day rule whenever he's going to defend the title on January 4th and not again until... February 25th, because even where I come from, uh, I can add and subtract, and uh, uh, that's not that's over 30 days. There's, you know, these guys have all kinds of clauses. He's got a certain, there's a, it's like having a, I, I looked at it like his, uh, having a vacation time. He had a certain amount of time that he could take off uh, based on his contract. On, on, he, he was contracted to wrestle a certain m- amount of times uh, during the course of the year, and he had fulfilled his agreement. So uh, they really had, they were kind of over a barrel. So I don't know what they could have done about it, but it is kind of frustrating. And two other things I'll point out real quick. It used to be that when a man won any uh, championship, Mm -hmm. that he would automatically assume the champion's schedule of title offenses. And that seems not to be the case in WCW recently. What's your point? What's your illustration? Well, like at the uh, Super Brawl press conference with Sting, they asked him uh, who his uh, next opponent would be. And he apparently had no idea, or like when uh, the Z-Man won the TV title a couple of years ago and Terry Taylor was scheduled to wrestle him, mm-hmm. Taylor said, well, there goes my title shot down the drain, and that necessarily wouldn't have been the case. Yeah. No, that's a good point. That's a good point. I think Sting was probably, after that match, was a little bit uh, caught up in the moment. I don't think he really cared who he wrestled at that time and probably hadn't given it a lot of thought, to be quite honest with you. But, uh, Mark, we appreciate your call tonight uh, on Wrestling with Jim Ross. Let's go talk to... Uh, Donald Indicator. Hi, Donald. Hi, Jim. How you doing? I got three questions. First question, I know Calvin Fry is the uh, president of WCW. Mm-hmm. He said vice president. Who is the president? Jack, Second question. Jack is, Petrick's the president. K. Allen Fry is executive vice president and in charge of day-to-day operations. Okay. Is Great Muda going to come back and whatever happened to wrestling number two? The Great Muda is coming back to WCW. He has signed uh, uh, some contracts uh, to wrestle for uh, the World Championship Wrestling beginning in April, and he's going to be tag-teaming with Sting on occasion. I know that uh, that's uh, uh, going to be uh, definite, so Muda will be back with Sting as a tag-team partner in some matches during the month of April, and I don't know how long he's going to stay, maybe a month. Uh, He's in such demand in his home country, it's hard to keep him here much longer than that. And Mr. Wrestling 2... Uh, who was originally from Hawaii. And years and years ago, he bought property there, and then he wrestled for many, many years, as you know, Donald, in uh, America, and basically here in Atlanta, home base. But he's returned to Hawaii. He's happily retired, and he's in great health and doing just fine. And we appreciate your call very much. Let's go to Anita and Marietta. Anita, you're on Wrestling with Jim Ross on AM750 WSB. Okay. Anita? Okay. Turn your phone down, my dear. Okay. Okay, hello, Mr. Jim Ross. Hi, Anita. Um, I have two... Okay, turn to the video. Um, 
I've got two short questions to ask you. Okay, ma'am. Okay, my first one is I've um, recently saw WCW, the main event, um, this evening. And I heard um, that there's a rivalry between um, Van Hammer and J.T. Southern. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I was was wondering um, when um, there would be a possible match-up with them. Oh, I'm sure they're going to wrestle sometime down the road, probably. Oh, I, I would guess in a month, six weeks, something like that, probably when they're going to get together. Both uh, both of them schedules are pretty full right now, but uh, somewhere down the road, maybe they should have a hair match. Oh, um, well, I don't know about that. I like their hair. Okay. But my second question is, um, I live in the Marietta area. Yes. And I was wondering, do you happen to know when um, WCW will be coming back to perform the wrestling matches at the Cobb County Civic Center? Uh, Anita, the, I don't think the Cobb County Civic Center is on the schedule right now, but uh, we get calls on that a, a lot. So I think it's something we'll we'll bring up to uh, the WCW board and let them uh, and the folks that make the schedule. It's a good point, and I appreciate your call tonight. Let's talk to Lee and Dalton. Hi, Lee. Hi. How you doing? I got some questions for you. All right, boy. You guys are question. You're, you guys are killing me tonight. You know that, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I'd like to know where uh, will Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert ever return to WCW? Oh, you never know. You know, uh, yeah, nothing. Uh, I don't think he's uh, having any discussions with him right now. But uh, there's no reason that I'm aware of Lee that would prevent him from coming back if uh, uh, both parties so desired. And uh, where's Alexandra York right now? Is she gonna be coming back? She's faded off into the big boardroom in the sky. I don't think she's gonna be back. Uh, uh, at least I haven't heard of her uh, resurfacing any, and she's not in wrestling any longer from what I understand. Let's go down to our long-distance line and talk to Sean in Pontiac, Illinois. Hi, Sean. Hi, Mr. Ross. Hey. First off, I want to say I enjoy your WCW program Thank that you. we get up here in central Illinois. And I got a question for you that I've been dying to, try to ask you. Why does Larry Zabisco have to have Polly Dangerously little dweeb as a manager well that's a great question sean i wish i could answer it larry zabisco doesn't need paulie for strategy or to to communicate for him uh, that's a question we'll try to get larry on here some night maybe you can call back and we'll ask him yeah and i also got one quickie didn't he uh when he initially left wcw as an undefeated western states champion mm-hmm. which, now will that title ever be uh uh me and well be activated. I, I don't think so, Sean, because I think the feeling at WCW is that there may be too many titles and it kind of it dilutes from the other championships. You know what I mean? So yes. I doubt it. Yes, sir. All right. Well, again, I want to say I appreciate your your insight on the WCW. I've been watching wrestling since I was eight years old. All right, I've been Sean. A student of it, and I hope you keep. Maybe someday come to Southern Illinois. All right, my friend. We'll come up there to the home near the, Sal- the Salukis of Southern Illinois. That was Sean in Pontiac, Illinois. And you're listening to Wrestling with Jim Ross. This is AM 750 WSB. Well, welcome back, everyone, to Wrestling with Jim Ross uh, here in Atlanta. It's a beautiful night right now. It's 57 degrees here in Atlanta. We can expect uh, scattered showers tonight with a low of only 54 degrees. And tomorrow, again, our meteorologist, Kurt Miller, says we're going to have scattered showers throughout the Atlanta area. Possibly a thunderstorm or two, and tomorrow's high will be around 63 degrees with a low tomorrow night of 47 degrees. And again, here in Atlanta on Peachtree, it's uh, 57 pleasant degrees, and we're happy you're with us here tonight on the program. We'll be back with you, of course, uh, next week, uh, next uh, Sunday night, 9 o'clock. If you're going to call the program, please don't start calling until 9 o'clock because it's uh, quite, uh, frankly, somewhat overwhelming to try to have uh, the sports talk show and all of uh, my friends trying to get in on the wrestling line. So if you'll wait till 9 o'clock to call, it'll certainly make everyone here uh, uh, happy and will m- help maintain their sanity because uh, we have nine lines here, and they have, they're have they all full right now at 872-0750. And, of course, long distance, uh, our number nationwide, and we're heard in 38 states tonight. I am informed 1-800-WSB-TALK, and we're going back to the telephones. Roy, you're on Wrestling with Jim Ross. How you doing? Uh, how you doing, Jim? Good. Um, I got two questions and a comment for you. Okay. Um, is Jason Thunderlager on a contract with WCW still? No, no he's not. He is. Uh, he has always been under contract with New Japan Pro Wrestling, and uh, we have a cooperative agreement that we share uh, wrestling talent with them. So uh, his American dates will be wrestled with WCW, but his contract is with New Japan. Uh, the, um... Tonight I saw Barry Windham go against Steve Austin mm-hmm. um, on 
the main event. Right. And I thought that was a great match. Do so you think that them two will get together again? Oh, I think so. I think most definitely. I think that, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Barry told me last week that he's got uh, uh, he's got more than a casual interest in the television title. And I think he and Austin both are just outstanding wrestlers. And uh, that should be a real neat matchup when they meet. And, and Roy, we appreciate your call from Palmetto. Let's talk to Chris. Hi, Chris. Hey. How you doing tonight? Fine. Um, I'd like to ask two questions. Okay, sir. Um... Whatever happened to Diamond Stud? Diamond Stud, as we addressed earlier in the program, sustained a serious uh, bicep and elbow injury that required uh, major surgery. So he is still in rehabilitation. And um, I'd like to know if the Road Warriors are planning to come back to WCW. There's no talk about the Road Warriors coming back. little talk about a month ago, but I think that's pretty well cooled down. I think that they're probably going to stay in the WWF. Uh, Sue, in Powder Springs, you're on Wrestling with Jim Ross. How are you tonight? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing, Mr. Ross? Fine, thanks. Okay, I just wanted to make uh, one comment uh, about uh, Marcus Alexander Bagwell, which I know him as Fabian from the Georgia All-Star area. Yes, ma'am. Uh, last week, a lady called in and wanted to know if his body had been built by steroids. Mm-hmm. And I just want to say that uh, Fabian has been a friend of mine for nearly two years. And I wouldn't hang around anybody who had built their body with steroids or used any drugs. Well, that's so a... I just want to say that that kid is drug-free. He's a good kid. I hate to call him a kid, but he is younger than I am. I hate to admit that. Yeah, he's just a pup. But uh, he is, he's drug-free, and I just want to say that he's a decent young man. And good. That he did not build his body with steroids, so keep on finding him. Have nothing to worry about with him. Well, that's good. I, I hope I hope that you're right. All right. And also, I want to make a comment. Uh, Thursday night, I went and seen uh, Steve Armstrong sing in a uh, concert. Uh-huh. And despite the fact that he has a new attitude that sometimes gets on the nerves, uh, he's a great singer. Really? I just want to publicly admit that he is he's fabulous. I mean... Michael Hayes has competition, <laughs> All right. but he has a new album, and he has every reason to be proud, because I hear that work, I take it to work with me. All right, Sue. Well, well thank you for calling us, and uh, we'll try to uh, listen to uh, some of uh, you know, Mr. Armstrong's uh, musical talents one of these days. Tracy in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you doing, Jim? Fine, thanks. Um, I got a question, and I want you to clear up the rumor for me, please. All right. All right, the question is, when is um, wrestling coming back to Mobile Beach? Well, I, it's, it's not scheduled. Uh, I, I've got the, I looked at the calendar here just a moment ago. It's not scheduled through June. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would think sometime in the summertime, but I'm just, uh, I'm guessing, uh, Tracy, but. Uh, the last one I've been to was the Bash on tour. Yeah. What's and your, what's your, what time. is your comment? Um, well, um, I've heard that Baby Doll was coming back. Is that true or what? No, as far as I know, uh, she has no plans on her coming back here either. See how rumors are in this in this uh, industry. Let's talk to Eric in Denham Springs, Louisiana. You're on Wrestling with Jim Ross on AM 750 WSB, Eric. Hey, uh, I have, Mr. Ross, I have a couple of questions for you. Okay. Uh, one, I'd like to know who you think is going to win uh, the two main events at WrestleMania. Uh, I probably would go with uh, Flair and Hogan. Okay, and uh, I'd also like to know how you... How you would compare uh, K. Allen Fry to Jack Tunney? Well, uh, Eric, I don't know Mr. Tunney, so I w it'd be very unfair for me to compare him with uh, uh, K. Allen Fry, who I've only known uh, since he's been on the job. Well, he's been with the company since last summer, but I've only known him in WCW since January. Uh, both seem to be very fair. I think perhaps that Mr. Fry's ideas is are going to be much more contemporary. I think they're going to be much more modern because of the age difference. Uh, Mr. Fry's in his early 30s. Now I'm assuming that Mr. Tunney's in his uh, in his 60s. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, appreciate your call tonight from Denham Springs, Louisiana. And let's see if we can get some more. We're, we're doing good here tonight. Uh, Tracy in Union City. Hi, Jim. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Jim, I have two questions. Okay. I have a four-year-old son. Okay, he has got all the wrestling figures. Yep. And he's wanting to know if there's going to be any more new ones coming out. Uh, I talked to the. Uh, I get that question a lot. As some, uh, some of you may remember, I talked to some people uh, last week about that. There will be new figures coming out, but I didn't get a lot more information. So, uh, I'll, but I, as soon as I know, I'll sh certainly let you know. Here. Okay. And my second question is, when will the next class of the champions be held? The next class of the champions will be held on Tuesday, June the sixteenth, from uh, the Citadel in Charleston, South Carolina. Okay. Will it ever be held in Atlanta anymore? The Clash? Uh-huh. Uh, I don't think it's scheduled for the, for Atlanta during the month, uh, I mean, during this uh, this year, but I think that Starcade, 
uh, will, 92 will be held in the Omni in Atlanta. And, and Tracy, we appreciate your call very much. Let's talk to Lynn in Marietta. Hi, Lynn. Hi, I got three questions for you. Okay, you better hurry. Uh, one, what happened to Lady Blossom? As far as I know, she got out of the wrestling business and may have gone back to England. Okay, and second of all, what happened to Woman? Woman is living in Florida, taking taking life easy. Okay, three, and um, I got a great combination that could come by and get to stop Jim, to stop of course, Paul Edentially and Medusa Michelli, and that is the Magnificent Mimi and Jonathan Blue. Okay. Well, that'd be an interesting situation. Thanks, Lynn. We appreciate your call tonight in Marietta. Uh, we'll get one more here real quick. Let's talk to Derek and Augusta. Hi, Derek. Hey, Jim. It's great to talk to you. I think you do a fine job on TV. I've Thank been you. listening to you for a couple of weeks now. Well, I appreciate that. And the show was great. Tell I, your I, friends about our radio show. We, we're getting really getting out there, and it's oh, uh, yeah, really doing well. It's it's a top-rated uh, radio program uh, in its time slot in Atlanta on AM or FM, and we're really proud of that. Yeah, well, I think you do a great job. Uh, I just have a couple of quick questions. First of all, is uh, Heavy Metal Van Hammer any kin to Ultimate Warrior? Because they look no. alike. No, they're not. Uh, okay, I didn't think so. A friend of mine thought they were, but I they're... didn't think so. Mm. And secondly, is Ron Simmons going to concentrate uh, on the world title, or is he going to be tag teaming with uh, the Junkyard Dogs? Well, I think that uh, Ron has some matches signed with JYD as a partner, but I believe if you look, really talk to Ron, as I have uh, in the past, uh, Ron is going to uh, concentrate on being the uh, world's heavyweight champion. He really wants to be the first black heavyweight champion of the world. And, man, I'm not going to count him uh, off the list of that. He's a great athlete. Derek, thanks for calling us tonight down in Augusta. And I certainly want to thank all of you for being with us here tonight on Wrestling with Jim Ross. Sorry we couldn't get all of you on the air tonight. We'll be back again next Sunday at 9 o'clock uh, here on AM 750 WSB. Don't forget to join us if you can in Atlanta this Wednesday night at Center Stage, the big national TV taping. And our first broadcast of WCW Saturday night is this Saturday night at 6.05 on TBS. For Daryl Harris, I'm Jim Ross saying good night, everybody. We had a blast at StarCast 6. A huge thank you to everyone who attended. And if you want to relive our stage show experience, you can with Premier Streaming Network. Over 20 stage shows took place StarCast weekend. From comedy shows, design panels, musical performances, talk shows, and more. Including a live edition of AEW Unrestricted with CEO Tony Khan. Sign up for Premier Streaming Network today and check out the shows available now on demand and in HD. And if you sign up today, you'll get two months free of Premier Plus. Enjoy the amazing lineup of content that Premier Streaming Network offers, including all five previous StarCast stage show lineups. Hundreds of hours of fantastic wrestling content at your fingertips. Visit StarCastOnPremiere.com. Hey guys, Tony Schiavone. Need to call a timeout real quick. Wanted to tell your listeners what I've been telling what happened when listeners for a while now about all the cool things happening over on adfreeshows.com. On the latest edition of The False Finish, Zach Gowan talks about reaching the top of the pro wrestling world against incredible physical odds before issues with immaturity got in his way. It's not a talent issue, it's a maturity issue. We want to see you continue to wrestle try new characters, become a heel, try new things, find a groove, the doors open, just mature a little bit. But it, it, but the, it was almost fatherly the way he sat me down and explained to me exactly why I was being released. And I'll always remember that, and I'll always thank Jim Ross every time I see him for that. As Dog and Cassio finished up their latest Ask Dog Anything, they kept the party going for ad-free shows members, answering more questions on a bonus overrun. Uh, we were the main event. Me and Brian Christopher were the main event. Doug was in a um, up there match. Jamie Dundee was in a tag title match, I'm sure. And we just stopped and started playing pool and drinking. Like that was what we did. We pulled through the median and turned around and just called from a payphone and said, "Yeah, our car, our car can't make it." That's just a small taste of what we got waiting for you. With four levels to choose from, see for yourself. My ad free shows is the best value in wrestling today. Sign up now at adfreeshows.com.